electrically, mechanically, chemically, and and that is also applicable to muscles, skeletal muscle. And in the in the anatomy department, you have seen a good number of skeletal muscles. Upper extremity, lower extremity, there are the muscles. So, what is the key to the upper extremity and lower extremity? Lower, lower extremity. Ah. What is the femoris muscle? Hmm? Dissection. তোমাদের হয়েছে এখনো হয়নি শুরু হয়নি ডিসেকশন হয়নি ফিমোনাল ট্রাঙ্গেল হয়েছে ফিমোনাল ট্রাঙ্গেল মাসেলস স্কেলিটাল মাসেল এসেনশিয়াল ফর লাইফ it is an excitable tissue and it is related to skeleton mainly skeleton movement is possible with this and the skeletal muscle if you consider and is the bulk of the muscle these are the tendons and it is composed of muscle fascicles muscle fascicles fascicles muscle fascicles muscle fascicles are formed of muscle fibers muscle fibers fibers muscle fibers whole skeletal muscle is surrounded by a connective tissue epimysium and there are fascicles com composed of muscle fibers and they are surrounded by perimysium and individual muscle cells surrounded by a, another thin connective tissue endomysium it is also related to, similar to that of the peripheral nerves now this muscle fascicle composed of muscle fibers muscle fibers are really cells they are elongated in structure and they are multinucleated they are multinucleated and they have stations stations like microscopy or electron microscopy and they show the stations muscle fibers of different dimension 20 to 100 mu m 20 to 100 mu m multinucleated multinucleated yeah. and they have stations like that cardiac muscle also have stations but they branch and they interdigitate with others but here it is not so no so and this these are called alternate dark and light band light and dark bands alternate so they are called started muscle stations stations and they can and they are voluntary muscle we can control their movement and they are essential for our existence because respiratory muscles are the started muscles if respiration stops hmm, for a minute or so and this muscle cells they begin and end at the tendons and their length vary according to the length of the whole muscle it may be few millimeter in some cases 
many centimeter in others and they are parallel to each other they have no anatomy that is the no gap junctions between them and they can contract individual individual or in group suppose if, if there is another muscle fibers muscle fibers and they have these tissues in this way so and they are in the register so under the light microscope or electron microscope you can see these stations light and dark band they are also called isotropic and anisotropic bands hmm. due to difference in the refractive ind indexes and it is due to some arrangement of filaments that is possible and it is due to the behavior of the polarized light during this passing that is called isotropic or light band and anisotropic of the dark band capital mm, letter a and i you can easily remember alternate bands are there clear yeah. now the muscle fibers are formed of innumerable number of myo myo Elongated structure, and it is a myofibril, and it is myofibril, myofibril. After this my myofibril, it can be displayed by the light microscope, but for higher magnification is required to explore the other elements. and this myofibril is formed of filaments 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 and filaments are composed of proteins cytoskeletal elements in really and they have the property of contraction contraction hmm. and this myofibril is consist of this filaments filaments in the register and not overlapping and for this reason the individual muscle or muscle fiber or the myofibrils they all show this bending pattern and they are in register if they are would, would have been overlapping then they then this type of uh, features cannot be bending pattern cannot be seen cannot be seen जो जो तुझे निश्चित एंड दिस द पार्ट ऑफ द माउ फिब्रिल एंड दे आर द फिलामेंट्स फिलामेंट्स थिक फिलामेंट्स एंड दिस द थिन फिलामेंट एंड इफ यू मैग्नीफाई दिस देन यू हैव दिस टाइप ऑफ फीचर्स इट इज अ थिक फिलामेंट थिक फिलामेंट एंड देयर इज द थिन फिलामेंट interdigitation interdigitation in this way they are disposed there and it is called a band anisotropic band and it is the i band totally there is this is the i band total this is i band this is half i band half total is there is the i band isotropic band so it is in the resting or in this position this is the i band and in between there is a 
deep line it is called jet line jet line jet line and within this part this is the dark dark band but at the center there is relatively lighter region it is called age band age band relatively lighter yeah. and at the middle of this a band there is this m line there is some dilatation and this is the m line m line it is the m line m line yeah m line this is this bending pattern this is the bending pattern and it continue and these filaments are formed of proteins thin thick filament suppose is dimension is 16 nanometer or so and it is and thin filament 6 to 7 nanometer or so they are diameter 16 in case of myosin and it is it is called myosin filament also and actin and myosin they are cytoskeletal protein you are familiar with molecular motors molecular motors part of the and there are molecular motor by means of which the cytoskeletal elements move similarly it is a cell nothing but the cell have different length also yeah and the, the contraction is taking place in this case in case of neuron it is only the excitation that is all that is produced but here the cells has the power to contract also contract also the language of the neurons is the action potentia generation of action potentia clear generation and the liberation of neurotransmitter from its end it is the function of the neurons they cannot contract but in their case there is generation of action potential at the same time there are contraction suppose it is the elongated muscle cell if you consider a muscle cell it is the resting condition and it is stimulated by the nerve stimulated by the nerve nerve whenever there is action potential arrives it then there is generation of action potential and in response to this there is the contraction of the muscle there is the contraction of the muscle contraction of the muscle contraction of the muscle that is the volume remains same but the length diminishes it was the initial length and it is the final it is the final 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 and it is possible with the contractile elements elements so actin and myosin they are present in this regular array regular array in, in this case then you have to know how they are composed of the filament is composed of proteins they are called myosin 2 myosin 2 within the cells all the cells all the living cells they have myosin this is myosin 1 and he, here it is myosin 2 myosin 2 is a heterohexamer it is a heterohexamer hundreds of myosin molecules come together to form this thick filament and their structure you will find in every good book in this the n terminal end, and it is c terminal end. is in terminal length. and this length is 134 nanometer or so whatever may be and there are two is the head light chains 1 2 3 4 light chains and these are the heavy chains heavy chains 
and total molecular weight 460,000 pounds. Now you can confirm these figures in your group text. Is the word There may be mistake, whatever it may be. Now their structure is, is now in this way. These are the heavy chains and this is the light chains, one, two, three, four, heterohexama. And they, they and they are named in different in different way. One is phosphorylatable light chain, another is the light at the alkali light chain in some test. In other test, one is the regulatory chain or phosphorylatable chain. Commonly test book of Ganong's they describe as phosphorylatable chain and alkali light chain. They are in this way, myosin 2 molecule, myosin 2. Mouse in two. And hundreds of this come together to produce this thick filament. Thick filament. They are aggregated in this way. These are the heads. Where they are disposed. Hundreds come together. Hmm. 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 Around the M, M line, at the uh, around the M line, there are some, some part that is called pseudo edge. Pseudo edge. Because these heads are absent here at the very center of this thing. M line and pseudo edge. M line and pseudo edge. Okay. Hundreds. So 200, 300, they come together to produce this thick filament. Thick filament is that it indicates this, this dark band, this dark band. And it is the, and in between them in the relaxed state, this are, this is the I bands from the actin filament, actin filament. And the head part that contains this system by means of which actually there is the sliding movement occurs between the thin filament and the thick filament. Length of the thick filament remains constant during complete contraction. Thin filaments also remains the same dimension. But the age band they disappear in complete contraction. And similarly, I band disappear during complete contraction. And there is inter digitation, so they come together. come together. They overlap each other. Actin filament, how this actin filament is produced? It is produced by this, it is a polymer of G actin molecules, G actin molecules, polymer of G actin molecules. They are produced by poly as polymers. G actin is a globular, globular actin, globular actin, and it unite with one another, one another. Mm -hmm. 
in this array. পুতির মতো মনে হয় পুতির পুতির যারা পুতির কাজ জানে পুতির কাজ জানে তাদের মধ্যে কেউ কেউ নিশ্চয়ই পুতির কাজ করেছে পুতি একটা সুতো দিয়ে তুমি তৈরি করলে আর একটা তৈরি করলে এবার ওটা জড়িয়ে দিলে ওটা যা তৈরি হবে সেটা একই ডাবল হেলিকাল স্ট্রাকচার হুম ডাবল হেলিকাল স্ট্রাকচার দুটো সুতো নিলে একটা রেড একটা হোয়াইট নিয়ে দূরে দুটো এন্ড যদি ই করে দাও পাকিয়ে দাও তাহলে পরে যা তৈরি হবে সেইভাবে তৈরি নেচারটা একইভাবে তৈরি করছে সব সবই এইভাবে তৈরি হচ্ছে এটা হচ্ছে জি অ্যাক্টিভ ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল মলিকুল ইজ জি অ্যাক্টিভ জি অ্যাক্টিভ গ্লোস অ্যান্ড হোয়েন ইট ইজ ফর্ম দেন ইট বিকামস ইনসলেবল অ্যান্ড ইট ফর্ম এ ফ্যাক্টিভ টোটাল ইজ দি এ ফ্যাক্টিভ এ ফ্যাক্টিভ এ ফ্যাক্টিভ থ্রি হান্ড্রেড টু ফোর হান্ড্রেড জি অ্যাক্টিভ মলিকুলস কাম টুগেদার and they form this type of polymer and so they are groups ebong dutro shudho jodi ebhabe jori dewa jay tale ki hobe group ta thakbe dutro side er thake dutro group paoa jabe barite porikha kore dekhte paro dutro dori niye jodi dekhbe du side e jokhon joriye debe tokhon dutro group toiri hobe and these groups are occupied by tropomyosin molecules tropomyosin molecules bujhte parcho যে পুতির কাজ করেছে সে খুব সহজেই বুঝতে পারবে যে এটা কিভাবে তৈরি হচ্ছে পুতি দিয়ে তো সব রকম তৈরি হচ্ছে ব্যাগ ট্যাগ সবই রকম পাওয়া যাচ্ছে নানা রকমের জিনিস পুতি দিয়ে তৈরি হয় সেরকম তাহলে তো দুটো করে গ্রুপ গ্রুপ থাকবে দুটো গ্রুপের মধ্যে থাকছে টোপোমাসিন মলিকুলস টোপোমাসিন মলিকুলস সাপোজ দে আর ইন দিস ওয়ে in between 40 to 60 tropomyosin molecules they come together come together tropomyosin molecules suppose it is alpha and it is beta it is alpha and beta and but when at a, at a particular group they are and beta of liberty and alpha of liberty in this way they are disposed বুঝতে পারছি তো ওটা তৈরি করার পরে সেখানে আবার নেচার ওরকমভাবে ই করে দিয়েছে এইরকমভাবে তার চেনগুলো রয়েছে ট্রোপোমায়োসিন মলিকুলস ট্রোপোমায়োসিন সেভেন্টি থাউজেন্ড মলিকুলার ওয়েট ট্রোপোমায়োসিন দে আর ডিসপোজড ইন দিস ওয়ে অ্যান্ড ওভার দি ট্রোপোমায়োসিন অ্যাট রেগুলার ডিস্টেন্সেস আর দি ট্রোপোনিন মলিকুলস formed of three parts troponin i troponin t and troponin c yeah at distances at distances so 38.5 nanometer this is not every book but i can remember a common biochemistry book and this part is discussed very well also in biochemistry texts at distances there are the troponin molecules troponin molecules suppose in the in that position there is this, this troponin t c i molecular weight between 18000 to 35000 the variable there is this this three there is the globular part at distances at troponin t means it unites with the tropomyosin molecule troponin t unites with the tropomyosin molecule and it also binds with troponin c and troponin i troponin i binds with the actin molecule troponin t unites with tropomyosin ebong the basic concept suppose it is the troponin t and it is the c and it is the i and t unites with the tropomyosin 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 myosin and troponin i it is with the unit with the actin bond it is the actin 
Nothing. Nothing. In the relaxed condition, it is tightly bound. Tightly bound. Tightly bound. Yeah. Tightly bound. And troponin C unites with calcium ion. Four calcium ion it can bind. Calcium, calcium ion. And when it binds with calcium ion, then there is some conformational change. That is the binding of troponin I with the actin is loosened. And tropomyosin has some movement, lateral movement. And it exposes some part over which myosin head can unite. Suppose in this condition, it is obscuring some part of the actin in uh, actin that is obscured. But when calcium binds, then there is lateral movement and it will expose some site of the actin over which the myosin head can bind. And when it binds, then there is reaction of ATP breakdown. ATP is given rise to ADP plus PI plus energy. Energy. In the resting condition, it remains in the state. But when it binds with the actin, then there is some explosive type of action. Then the reaction is in, in increased in that sense, that is, they are liberated. ADP and PI is liberated along with the energy. And that is responsible for the movement of the head of the mouse in filament. Now, for now if you consider this mouse in filament, now they are in this pattern you consider. It is the mouse in head. And there is relative movement. And it has actin binding site. And some part, some, there was, this part is the actin binding site. And some nanometer distance away, that is the ATP binding site. ATP binding site. And when ATP enters it, and it converted into ADP, adenosine diphosphate plus inorganic phosphate, and um, the energy is conserved. And it is in that form. But when it binds with the actin molecule, actin molecules, then there is liberation of this ADP and PI. And energy is used, and there is movement of this. And actin filament will boom it. Forty-five degree or, or movement in this, and that is responsible for the contraction of the whole muscles. There are also other cytoskeletal elements, elements, and then the and this polarity, and this polarity is in the reverse direction, in the opposite direction, and they all bring these filaments close together, close together. So there is whenever it is fully contracted. Then there is the obliteration of the I band, there is obliteration of the H band, and then the sarcomia will be short. Sarcomia between the Z lines, the space between the Z lines are called sarcomia. In the completely relaxed condition, huh? relaxed condition, it is 2, 3, 0, 0 nanometer, nanometer, or 2.3 mu m. And when fully contact is the A band, when it is overlapping, then the Z line comes together and it becomes 1800 nm or 1.8. And there is, there is no AJ band and this I band. And it, it was the early, very early, they recognized this. And they thought that this is the basic mechanism by which the contraction is done. And what percentage of shortening, they differ in different texts. And you, you read different texts of same text, whatever it may be. The basic concept is required. Basic concept. And in this way, there is movement. There is movement. And to know this, we have to go through some part of the histology histology and from this 
you have understood that calcium ion is required and how calcium ion is entering into the cell or it is available within the cell you have to know so some part of histology that is sarcoplasmic reticulum sarcoplasmic reticulum reticulum is a specialized endoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cell reticulum and this reticulum is has two parts one is terminal part there is called terminal cisterns and there are other parts there is called l tubules or longitudinal tubules longitudinal tubules and they are surrounding this l tubules or sorry reticulum they are surrounding this myofibrils surrounding this myofibrils and they contain cytoplasm contains good number of nuclei and they contain glycogen and creatine phosphate and other elements cytoskeletal elements now this for the, uh, for this purpose when you consider a cell then there is there are the sarcoplasmic reticulum they are surrounding this surrounding this myofibril and at the ai junction in the relaxed condition if you consider with a different color at the ai junction in case of a skeletal mass a relaxed condition and then you will find that there are some dilatation in this this is the terminal cisterns of endoplasmic reticulum in fact they are like the reticulum they are surrounding this surround this filaments of the myofibril and they harbor this calcium ion stored in this with calcioquestin protein calcioquestin protein they have harbor numerous calcium ions and in between the two there is some space and that space is occupied by this transverse tubule of t tubules t tubules t tubules t tubules and they are connecting this they are connecting with the extracellular fluid coming from the sarcolemma sarcolemma and it is required for the excitation contraction coupling excitation contraction coupling you are familiar with the term in case of excitable tissue there is only excitation but whenever there is contraction there must be there must be some contractile element excitation followed by contraction like lightning and thunder amra prothome age bidyut dekhi tar porei mekher gorjon shona jay hoy na manusher moddhe prothome jhogra jhati hoy ha tar pore maramari hoy ha ekhon jhogra jhati ta kader moddhe hoy tader muscle power ta kom contraction contraction thake na porsho porsho porki gali galaj kore seta amra tv te dekhi dekhe ek pokkho niye beshi to arondho onubhob kori ta ekhon shei khetre jekhane contraction maramari jekhane hobe tar muscle সেদিন দেখছে দেখে দেখেছে স্কুলে একজন হেডমাস্টারকে একজন বলবান লোক ঘুষি মারছে আই এনজয়েড দি আইটেম খুব সুন্দর সে কোনো একটা অন্যায়ের প্রতিবাদ করেছিল করা উচিত হয়নি সে কেন প্রতিবাদ করতে গেল কাজে যেটা হয়ে যাচ্ছে মেনে নেওয়া উচিত ছিল করেনি বলে মারটা খেলো কিন্তু আমরা যারা দেখলাম তারা বললাম যে না আমার পয়সা স্বার্থক আমি এটা একটা দৃষ্টিনন্দন জিনিস দেখলাম সে বলবান লোক মেরে যাচ্ছে সেরকম এক্সাইটেশন কন্ট্রাকশন কাপড়ে এক্সাইটেশন মিনস অ্যাকশন পোটেনশিয়াল ফলোড বাই কন্ট্রাকশন অ্যান্ড দিস এক্সাইটেশন ইজ রিকোয়ার্ড টু মেক ক্যালসিয়াম অ্যাভেলেবল ক্যালসিয়াম অ্যাভেলেবল টু দি কন্ট্রাক্টাল এলিমেন্টস কন্ট্রাক্টাল এলিমেন্টস মায়োসিন অ্যান্ড অ্যাক্টিং মায়োসিন অ্যান্ড অ্যাক্টিং আর দি ট্রু কন্ট্রাক্টাল এলিমেন্ট বা সাইটোস্কেলিটন অ্যান্ড রিল্যাক্সিং এলিমেন্ট are the topomyosin and troponin in the relaxed condition we discussed that it will obscure the site where the myosin head can bind so they are the relaxing protein relaxing protein in that case so in the if the stations are asked in the examination the actin filament is composed of f actin 
formed of polymerization of the G actin and it is group that is the topomycin at regular distances, regular distances and at intervals of 38.5 nanometers. So they are the troponin components. And this actin uh, filament that is produced, that is also a pitch. And they are in regular, re regular array. 35.5 nanometer the wavelength of the thin filament. Everything not give, given in every text, and that is not much required. It, it is not essential to remember everything in details. It is not possible and it is not required. But to, when you go through the books initially, you can remember uh, everything. But gradually you forget, only uh, you can remain the basic things, what is often. Now, these are this sarcoplasmic reticulum. It contains the terminal part, it's called terminal system. It is related with the dilated part. It is well developed in skeletal muscle. And between these two, there is the T tubule or transverse tubule. And it is communicated with the extracellular fluid. And they together they form the triad. Triad. And, from, and the T tubule is, is required to bring the action potential within this structure, within the cytosol, action potential. Yeah. If this, in case of smooth muscle, in some cases, multi-unit smooth muscle, the cells are very sh short in length. And there is no requirement of T tubules. Whenever it is depolar depolarized, then calcium do enter. And that is sufficient um, for the contraction. There might be change in the membrane potential, but action potential is not essential in that sense. If the cell volume is small, length is very low, then action potential is not required. Some depolarization is required so that this calcium amount can enter. In some multi-unit smooth muscle, then there is no requirement of the T tubules. But it is the elongated structure, many centimeters may be the dimension. So at a single time, there must be all spread through all through this. So the muscle, the cell can contract as a whole within a short time. Contraction is different, um, parts at different times is not warranted. It requires to sell the contact the cell at the same time. And for this purpose, the nature has devised this mechanism to bring the membrane potential within this. And whenever there is action potential, and then there is liberation of calcium from this terminal system. Entry from the outside is not required. Entry from outside is not required. Whenever it, it is the action potential is, is reaches this, then there is sufficient amount of calcium is liberated. And that is responsible for contraction. External calcium is not required. Skeletal muscle, they contract quickly. It is every survival value. So it is not dependent as such on the extracellular calcium and concentration. On the other hand, cardiac muscle, the T tubule is much wider. T tubule is much wider, wider. And this type of regular triad may not be present. But this type of structure is also present in cardiac muscle. And entry of extracellular calcium through this T tubule into the cell is essential in case of cardiac muscle. Hmm. In the practicals, amphibian practicals or so, if the cardiac muscle is placed in a fluid that have no calcium on, then it will fail to contract up some time but is not in the skeletal muscle. In numb muscle preparation, it is independent of, it, it is independent of extracellular calcium. When you stimulate the nerve, it will contract. Because huge amount of calcium is available within the cell and that is the requirement. Requirement. And this calcium amount when it is liberated and it will unite with the troponin C moiety. Troponin C moiety. And when 
it is it um, unites with this then this troponin i binding with the actin with the troponin is loosened loosened and there is relative lateral motion of the tropomyosin tropomyosin and with this there is the exposure of these sites and when it is there is the movement lateral movement then the site is exposed and myosin head can bind with it myosin head can bind with it and when it is there is increase intensification of the myosin atpas activity myosin atpas activity myosin atpas activity and then there is this contraction understand that there is the movement of this is called power stroke there is movement from this position to this position is called the power stroke power stroke and the single action potential it has been seen that there is the movement is 10 nanometer or so 10 nanometer so and a good number they uh, undergo this type of contraction this type of movement and they are rapidly repeated whenever there is brisk contraction it is five times per second this type of movement going on going on and in this way there is the sliding of the actin filaments within the thin filament thick filaments myosin filaments and there is shortening of the muscle and force generation yeah and so excitation contraction coupling is important for the examination frequently appears in examination excitation contraction coupling suppose it depends upon how you will describe it will depend upon the marks if it is 10 marks then you have to go some in, into the details of this to some extent but if it is 5 marks only a flow chart may be sufficient sufficient so what occurs normally skeletal muscle does not contract without the action potential of its supplying nerve supplying now then so whenever there is excitation of the excitation contraction coupling will find this in in your text from the nerve lower motor neuron action potential is coming at the neuromuscular junction neuromuscular junction and from the nerve that is the liberation of acetylcholine 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 will be released acetylcholine and that will combine with that of the nicotinic receptor muscle type of receptor nicotinic receptor receptor of the muscle in the muscular junction and in that case it is the in is the folded position it is the muscle cells in that case there is the folded position and it is negotiated by this terminal part of the neuron terminal part of the neuron neuro and then it contains the vesicles vesicles they are concentrated in this part in this part typically more at the this part ep epical part this is called active zones acetylcholine containing vesicle clear vesicles this is vesicles and whenever this action potential is coming then there is entry of calcium ion to some this is voltage gated cal calcium channels and there is exocytosis of this acetylcholine containing vesicles and acetylcholine is available it unites with these receptors receptors and it diffuse into this receptor and it is the ligand gated receptors and there is initially there is formation of the end plate potential end plate potential and at regularly reaches this action potential and action potential will propagate on either side more than the requirement is always available 
whenever the action potential is arriving as the neuromuscular junction initially there is end plate potential this is the sub threshold potential in that sense and when it reaches a particular value then there is generation of the action potential of the axolema and normally more than this requirement is liberated everywhere so regularly whenever there is action potential then there is muscle contraction physiologically bojha gelo pera bujhte parecho in the nervous system in the central nervous system there is a neuron and there are good number of the synapses and whenever the individual synapses consider in that case in that case there may be depolarization or in some cases hyperpolarization and there is every chance of integration but in this case whenever there is action potential the muscle cell supplied by that branch normally it will always reach the action potential is contracts মানে আমরা যে এটা হচ্ছে যে আমরা চিন্তা করে কোনো একটা কাজ করছি কাজ করছি চিন্তাটা যখন হচ্ছে তার মধ্যে পজিটিভ নেগেটিভ হচ্ছে এখন চিন্তাটা যখন সঠিক হয়ে গেল যে এটা করা যুক্তিযুক্ত সেটার ভবিষ্যতে ভালো বন্ধ কি হবে সেটা বিচার করে না করা না করার উপরে সেটা তখন নির্ভর করছে না বুঝতে পারছো তো যেমন আমি একটা ঢিল ছুটলাম হুম আমি একটা লোককে ঢিল ছুটলাম সে লোকটার সঙ্গে হতে পারে ঝগড়া হয়েছে লোকটা সামনে দিয়ে যাচ্ছে আমি ঢিল ছুটলাম তখন আমার বিবেক বুদ্ধি আমার লোভ হয়ে গেল কিন্তু আমি যখন অ্যাকশন পয়েন্ট যখন হয়ে গেল কাজটা হয়ে গেল কিন্তু আমার ধারণা ছিল ওটা কোনো সিসিটিভিতে আমাকে ধরা আমি ধরা পড়লাম বুঝতে পেরেছো তো তার মানে কি ভাবিয়া করিও কাজ করিয়া ভাবিও না হ্যাঁ সেই জন্য সিস্টেমটাও এরকমভাবে আমাদের তৈরি হয়ে রয়েছে ফিজিওলজি ইনক্লুডস দি গুড পিপলস লাইক ইউ অর ব্যাড পিপুল লাইক ইউ বাট ইউ হ্যাভ টু নো দি ফিজিওলজি দ্যাট ইজ হোয়েন এভার দ্যাট ইজ অ্যাকশন পোটেনশিয়াল that is initially their generation of the end plate potential normally it always reaches this firing level and there is generation of action potential and it will propagate and this action potential will enter by means of this t tubules t tubules and the cell as a whole can contract quickly quickly and when this calcium ion binds with one there is this seed troponin in c moiety c moiety then seven binding site of the mouse in head is exposed seven mouses and they are under contraction in this way force can be generated and in some text it has been possible to know the force generated at um, at a single cross bridge and it is called cross bridge also mouse in head binding that is the it is this cross bridge and force the gene gene that has been calculated one pico newton or so this value textbook of boron they explain in this way it is not always possible to go into everything details everything details and it is different subjects time is short so it is not possible to go through all the books at this level but i should mention those who interested going library you can then that it is possible possible to measure the force generated at a single cross bridge yeah now what occurs in this case then there is the action potential action potential initially there is the end plate potential end plate potential and it can be demonstrated by means of if the receptor is treated with qra then the end, end plate potential can be demonstrated potential demonstrated in the neuro neuromuscular junction there are innumerable numbers of receptors suppose in a good text that is written that is the suppose it is 15 to 40 million receptors million receptors million receptors and 60 vesicles are liberated by action potential 60 vesicles and each contain 1000 10000 10000 
that is this molecules and it is 10 times that is the requirement if only six vesicles are liberated it is sufficient but the nature is cautious in this case so sufficient amount is liberated it is the more than 10 times of the requirement so n plate potential always reaches the action potential but if this receptor is to some extent poisoned by q rate q rate q rate and in that case n plate potential can be demonstrated because they are occupied so in that case there is depolarizing potential or the localized potential n plate potential can be demonstrated and there will be every chance of temporal summation because in a single muscle cell single skeletal muscle cell has a only a single nerve ending has a single action branch that is in terminal buttons so single neuromuscular junction there so there is no scope of special summation but temporal summation can be demonstrated in that case in curatis muscle that is the rapidly repeated stimulation can bring the curatis muscle into action potential action potential yeah now this n plate potential it, it always always reaches the action potential and it will propagate propagate and then this calcium ion will be liberated calcium ion will be liberated from this terminal system and here there is dihydropyridine receptors dihydropyridine receptors in the tt tubes and rhinodine receptor in the sarcoplasmic reticulum dihydropyridine receptors it is a calcium channel in so calcium can enter but in case of skeletal muscle it is not required it only triggers the release and rhinodine receptor that is for the endoplasmic reticulum it is a ligand gated channel and somehow it is opened by this action potential so dihydropyridine receptor structure of pyridine you can find your biochemistry text dihydropyridine and rhinodine receptors it is a calcium channels ligand gated calcium channel in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and calcium will come out in the resting condition the calcium ion concentration within the cytosol is 10 to the power minus 7 to 10 to the power minus 8 mole per liter minus 8 mole per liter mole per liter resting condition and whenever there is action potential it will rapidly reach to value of 10 to the power minus 5 mole per liter and then uh, this contraction will take place this calcium will bind with this troponin c and this activity of the troponin i which is normally firmly bound with the actin it become loosened and there is a lateral displacement of the topomyosin and in this way they uncover this site where the myosin head can bind and when this occurs then there is increase in the myosin activity ATPase activity there is liberation of the ADP and PI and energy is produced 7 point per mole 7.3 kilocalorie this mole and there is the power stroke conformational change now after this power stroke it is required that it should detach it should detach otherwise it will remain fixed in this way and for this there is the another ATP molecule can bind and another molecule molecule of ATP can bind with the mouse in head with the mouse in head another so initially there is ATP and that is liberated products are liberated but when it is in the relaxed state then another ATP should come we should come to detach it to detach it suppose if there is single action potential there is contraction followed by relaxation and in that case also ATP is required to detach it to detach it now how relaxation and in this way contraction is taking place taking place but then after this quick contraction then there is these are all easy things very easy things 
তোমার যখন বই পড়বে দেখবে খুব সহজ জিনিস হ্যাঁ তোমার মনে হবে ক্লাসে টাসে যাওয়ার তো দরকার পড়ে না বুঝতে পারিস এবং ক্লাসে টাসে না গিয়েও তো অনেকেই পাস করে গেছে সহজ জিনিস তো কিছু নেই এমন কিছু জটিলতা কিছু নেই বইয়ে দেখবে সব লেখা আছে সমস্ত সো ডিউরিং রিল্যাক্সেশন ডিটাচমেন্ট ডিটাচমেন্ট অলসো রিকোয়ার এটিপি অ্যান্ড ইট রিমেন্স ইন দ্যাট ওয়ে দ্যাট ইজ এটিপি প্লাস পিআই বাট ইট ইজ রিমেন্ড ইন দ্যাট পজিশন দিস এনার্জি ইজ নট লিবারেটেড এনার্জি ইজ নট লিবারেটেড সো ইট ইজ ইন দি রেস্টিক কন্ডিশন নাও দিস ক্যালসিয়াম অ্যামাউন্ট দ্যাট ইজ এন্টারিং হোয়াট হোয়াট শুড বি দি ফেট অফ দিস ক্যালসিয়াম অ্যামাউন্ট হোয়েন ইট ইজ কামিং দেন ইট ইজ অ্যাক্টিভলি টেক ইন ইন উইদ ইন দি লংগিচিউটিনাল পার্ট অফ দিস এল টি বুস দে উইল রিঅ্যাকুমুলেট দিন ইন দিস দ্যার ইজ ক্যালসিয়াম ম্যাগনেশিয়াম এটিপিএস এটিপিএস অ্যাক্টিভলি ট্রান্সফার দিস ক্যালসিয়াম ফ্রম দি সাইটোসল ইন টু দি লুমেন অফ দি দ্যার ইজ দি এল টিবিউস এল টিবিউস অ্যান্ড দে দেন ডিফিউজ টু দি টার্মিনাল সিস্টেম ফর দ্যার ক্যাল সিকুয়েস্টেন প্রোটিন দ্যার হেল্পস টু মেনটেন দেম স্টোর্ড অ্যাট দিস সাইট স্টোরেজ সাইট সো সাইটোসলি কনসেনট্রেশন দেন এগেইন রিটার্ন ব্যাক ফ্রম দিস ভ্যালু টু দিস ডিউরিং কন্ট্রাকশন ইট ইজ ইন দিস অ্যাকশন পোটেনশিয়াল অ্যান্ড ডিউরিং রিল্যাক্সেশন and re- relaxation it is turned back to this and then there is displacement of calcium from this displacement of calcium from this troponin c complex and topomyosin will again recover the area for the mouse in head adjustment and in this way relaxation do take place take place yeah. now there are also other proteins that are important in skeletal muscle like actinin alpha actinin alpha actinin actinin it helps to bind this actin molecule actin molecule with the z line z line alpha actin and with the actinin there are other proteins like nebulin or so parallel with it parallel with this actin filament and filament structural proteins they are important they help its proper synthesis or so in this way now from the z line from the z line to m band there are this titin filament titin filament titi titin filament very elongated very high molecular weight 3 into 10 to the power 6 molecular weight tight in film and it has different uh, types of structures different types of structures and that that can be elongated you know make them elastic so initially if they are straight stretching they offer little resistance but when the stretch is muscle is more and they their resistance increases in this way they help to maintain the length of this muscle structural proteins Interme- they are all intermediate proteins they are called and they are present and their defect may be responsible for rare, some rare cases of uh, disease involving the skeletal muscle skeletal muscle dystrophin is an important protein dystrophin is an important protein. and it connects this thin filaments actin filaments actin filaments with the extracellular fluid protein dystrophin and it is connected and it is elongated type of molecule molecule elongated type of molecule and it there are numerous other proteins that is these c terminal n terminal different types of ends and it helps to and dystrophin molecule with the merosin sub unit merosin sub unit of the extracellular fluid protein extracellular fluid protein that is the and laminins they are called laminins that is the part is merosin and this bind with this dystrophin 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 different components beta alpha component beta component alpha component that is the it unites with the merosin component 
of myrosine and laminin in the extracellular fluid, in the extracellular fluid, in the basal lamina, and this beta alpha, and in this way, there is this, a disease connected with the actin filament, actin filament. There is a sarcoglycan com component, sarcoglycan component in the, um, that is this plasma membrane, sarcoglycan, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, sarcoglycan component. There are also other components you will find in the text. And they form a complex of proteins. Dystrophin is a rod-like structure in, in this way, structured in this way. And its deficiency is seen in clinical situation. Muscular dystrophy, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, D-U-C-H-E, muscular dystrophy, DMD, or when the, that it is an X-linked recessive disease, recessive disease, and whenever the disease is less severe, there is another form of Becker's muscular dystrophy is there, Becker's muscular dystrophy, muscular dystrophy, muscular dystrophy is there. X-linked recessive disease, you can find in your clinical examination in the hospital. In the male babies, there are this pseudo hypertrophy may be there. The muscles are weak, but they contain fibrous tissue. Apparently, you will see the hypertrophy from the outside, but in reality, they are weak. And it is dangerous when it involves the heart or the respiratory muscles and longevity is lower than normal, chronic disease, almost incurable, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. And less severe form, that is, that is the dystrophy, um, Becker's muscular dystrophy. Similarly, titans, in some case, cases, rare cases, this deficiency in these uh, titan molecules, titan molecules, that uh, mm, uh, from M line to Z line, Z line, titan molecules. Titan molecules. And they are also, and they are, it has been noted in some cases, rare cases. So these are these different parts of the muscle and excitation contraction coupling. And there is excitation and contraction and relaxation. It is important for the examination. There is the, from the beginning, I should not take the minute from the other class. Excitation contraction coupling, action potential in the neuron. At the neuromuscular junction, there is liberation of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine acts upon the ligand guided channel, nicotinic receptor, and there is initially there is the, there is the end plate potential, and it regularly reaches the action potential. Action potential will traverse to the T tubules, and by means of dihydropyridine receptor, there is liberation of calcium from the anodine receptor of the terminal cistern and when its concentration increases, it unites with the troponin C moiety. Then this, um, there is this uh, activity of the troponin I with the uh, actin uh, normally it is strong and that is become loosened. And there is lateral movement of the tropomyosin molecule and there is, exploding, there is the exposure of the site over which the myosin head can bind. And there is liberation of energy and there is some movement of the part of the head that connects with the branching part, um, elongated part, and it is called the power stroke. And in this way, contraction occurs on either side. It helps the, it takes the help of other proteins. There are also desmins that combine with the, there is the actin filament to the filament. So that the, and these proteins are also helpful, helpful. And now, whenever, there is, whenever there is single action potential, this calcium ion that comes out and it is mopped by the L tubules by calcium magnesium ATPs. Another ATP must bind with that to, uh, to relieve it this from this side for the deta detachment. And when the calcium ion concentration falls, then this calcium uh, troponin C uh, activation is terminated and there is replacement of the tropomyosin to the original site and obscuring the mouse in binding site and relaxation occurs. In response to single contraction, it is called muscle twitch. And remaining part we will discuss in the next week. Uh, 
lumbar uh, nerves in the inferior extremity which is more important especially in clinical point of view uh, there are so many important nerves and in your clinical practice you will get patients in the outdoor with the nerve damage so how do they present and what are the anatomical reason behind for these defect just to know this we have to know the nerves of the inferior extremity i have already told you to know any nerves you have to categorize or divide this in the following headings number 1 origin root value root value of all the nerves are not required only the important root value of the important nerves are required then the course and distribution branches and then last but not the least effect of clinical anatomy so these are the by way we read the nerves whatever it may be the superior extremity whether it is present in the inferior extremity whether it is present in the abdomen head neck etc this is the protocol origin from where this nerve arise root value you know of important nerves then the course how the nerve goes in our body and then the branches and distribution give branches to supply and there are branches doesn't mean it only supplies a muscle there is a tendency to write when we ask you the branches you will write the muscular branches but nerves not only a motor muscular branches mean motor but it has also has got sensory component so you have to mention the sensory part of the nerve the cutaneous distribution of the nerve you don't forget of any nerves the cutaneous or sensory distribution cutaneous nerves which supply carries the sensation from the skin of the um defined part so you have to write this and also the articular branches to supply the joint nearby joints so this is important then the clinical anatomy when this nerve is damaged what happens to a person so these are the protocol so to know the origin of the nerves of the inferior extremity you have to know the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus which is actually a part of the abdomen not in the inferior extremity but without this you cannot go through i this is not time so i have already detailed described the lumbar plexus in last class just to recapitulate i will give you some points so that you can understand the, the subsequent discussion lumbar plexus already you have gone through the brachial plexus you know the brachial plexus is situated in the lower part of the neck and the axilla which is formed by i repeatedly tell you anterior primary rami when the spinal nerve comes out from the vertebral intervertebral foramen from the vertebral column it immediately divides into two one is known as the anterior or ventral rami and one is dorsal rami or posterior rami some say anterior primary rami and dorsal primary rami and the plexus is are formed only by the anterior or ventral primary rami dorsal rami does not form any plexus so brachial plexus is formed by the anterior primary rami of the c5 to t1 nerves and lumbar plexus is formed by the anterior rami of the l1 to l4 nerves with a contribution from the t12 anterior rami of the t12 nerve another name of the t12 nerve or thoracic 12 nerve is known as the subcostal nerve already you know so lumbar plexus is formed by the joining with each other a network is formed look a network is formed a slight contribution above nerve subcostal nerve give a contribution sorry give a contribution look this is a subcostal nerve 
it gives a contribution to L1 number. Anterior primary rami, L1 means lumbar 1. It is the lumbar 1 vertebra, lumbar 2, lumbar 3, lumbar 4, lumbar 5. So, L1 now comes out the interval between the L and L2. So, it gives a contribution to the L1 nerve, L1 nerve, L2 nerve, L3 nerve and L4 nerve and this is the L5 nerve. Each L1 nerve, L2 nerve, L3 nerve, L4 nerve immediately divides into anterior division and a posterior division. So, each L1 nerve, L2 nerve, L3 nerve, L4 nerve divides into anterior and posterior division. Then anterior division joins with the anterior division of the L2 and L3 in this way and posterior division joins with the posterior division of L2, L3, L4, etc. In this way a plexus is formed. I am detailed given in the last class. So, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. L5, this is and each L1 nerve divides into anterior and a posterior, anterior and a posterior, anterior and a posterior. Anterior division of L1, L2, L3 in this way and posterior division in this way from a plexus, ultimately from this plexus nerve arises. L1 nerve also and it is the T12 nerve, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. T12 give a contribution to the L1 nerve and L1 nerve again comes and divides into a branches. Similarly, another branch comes from here. In this way, from this plexus, different nerves arises. I am not going into detail. So, in this way, plexus is formed. So, what are the L1 to L4 with a slight com uh, contribution of the T12 or subcostal nerve? This plexus is formed. And another important factor I have already told in last class about the L4 nerves. L4 nerves is a peculiar thing, nerve. It divides into a anterior rami. I am not dealing with the posterior rami. Anterior rami, L4 nerve, it divides into a two branches, upper and lower. Upper joins with the lumbar plexus. This is the lumbar plexus. Upper one joins with the lumbar plexus. And lower one, this is the L5 nerve. Lower one joins with the L anterior rami of the L5 nerve and form a very important nerve known as the lumbocostal trunk or lumbocostal nerve which joins with the lower nerves S1 nerve to form sacral plexus. So, L4 nerve is a nerve which bifurcates mean divides bifurcates to join the lumbar plexus above and the sacral plexus below as a lumbocostal nerve. So, L4 nerve is known as the nervous farcalis, farcate, bifurcate. So, it is lumbus farcalis. And L5 nerve is a very important nerve which passing on the anterior aspect of the ala of the sacrum to join the sacral plexus. And this lumb It is situated within the muscle fibers. That's when within the substance of the swas major muscle. Swas major muscle, it is the swas major muscle. This is the swas major muscle. By the side, it is the quadratus lumborum. So, and this is the iliacus muscle. This is the quadratus lumborum muscle. This is the iliacus muscle. Kalkan bolichilam. Next din bolbo. Dorsal aspect of the ilium tai bolte bulegechi. Acha jagge. 
so this is the swas mesar muscle this is the iliac muscle khub bhalo kore lokkho rakho this is the swas mesar muscle this is the iliac muscle and the groove the interval we call the iliopsoas groove this iliac and swas muscle together comes under the what is this inguinal ligament comes under the inguinal ligament and jointly joins with the inserted into the lesser trochanter of the femur so it is the iliopsoas groove so it is the swas mesar muscle swas mesar muscle has got a medial border and a lateral border can you see the lumbar plexus here in this picture why because it is lumbar plexus cannot be seen because it is present within the swas mesar muscle in the right side the swas mesar muscle is cut so that you can see the lumbar plexus so the lumbar plexus is present within the swas mesar muscle and branches arises within the swas mesar muscle then it pierces these branches pierces the swas mesar muscle to comes in different levels to come to come out so lumbar plexus is situated within the swas mesar muscle or formation anterior rami of the l1 l4 nerve with a contribution of the tu12 nerve situation it is situated within the swas mesar muscle next branches important branches are the ilio hypogastric ilio hypogastric ilio inguinal then genito femoral nerve the l1 and l2 combine together to form a nerve known as the genito femoral nerve very important nerve ektu boleni this genito femoral nerve comes down here and divides into a genital branch and femoral branch so the name is genito femoral hey the pechon ki likcho tumi what are you writing e je tumi ha ki likcho notes acha thik ache na practical likcho histology ke jano acha thik ache usually ami o portam eta amar amar जेनिटोलिटली <laughs> এটা কিন্তু উইদিন দা সোয়াস মেসার মাসল ভালো করে লক্ষ্য করো অ্যাবডোমেন একটু পড়ি নিচ্ছে উইদিন দা সোয়াস মেসার মাসল সো ইউ ক্যান নট সি দা ফরমেশন এই বুঝতে পারছো তো সবাই আমরা কিন্তু এই জায়গাটা দেখতে পাবো না অ্যাবডোমেন ওপেন করলে কাটলেই দেখতে পাবো দেন ইট পিয়ারসেস দা সোয়াস মেসার মাসল এন্ড কামস আউট টু লাই অন দা সোয়াস মেসার মাসল it is the identification point of the jokhon abdomen korbe eta kintu ospite thakbe ei genito femoral nerve er ekhane suto bada hoye ei khane thakbe what is the nerve identify je with that nerve which lies on the swas mesar muscle on its anterior aspect it is the genito femoral nerve this genito femoral nerve then divides into a genital branch and a femoral branch dekhte pachho ki a genital branch which enters the deep inguinal ring traverses the inguinal canal ekhon bujhte parcho na and then comes in the scrotum to supply the trimester muscle present in the scrotum and also the sensory supply in the anterior third of the scrotum and the, or labium majus in female eta porar dorkar nei ekhon don't read now read this the femoral branch femoral branch comes under the inguinal ligament within the femoral sheath 
ফিউমোনাল শীতের মধ্যে দিয়ে বের হচ্ছে আর্টারিয়াল আর্টারিয়াল যেখান দিয়ে আর্টারি আছে সেখান দিয়ে বের হবে দেন ইট পিয়ার্সেস দ্য ফিউমোনাল শীত টু কাম আউট এন্ড টু সাপ্লাই দ্য স্কিন অন দা আপার পার্ট অফ দা অ্যান্টেরিয়ার অ্যাসপেক্ট অফ দা থাই সো ফিউমোনাল ব্রাঞ্চ ইট ক্যারিজ দা সেনসেশন from the upper and slightly medial aspect of the skin of the thigh and age ki bolechi ekta shudhu bole nei the genital branch supply the cremaster muscle cremaster muscle is related to the testis bhitore amader scrotum er moddhe testis thake female er ei reflex ta hobe na kemon testis thake cremaster muscle is a muscle surrounds the testis when it contracts the testis pulls up testis goes up উপরে উঠে যায় সুতরাং টু নো হেদার দ্য এল ওয়ান নার্ভ ইজ ফাংশনিং উই টে উই ডু এ টেস্ট স্পেশালি ইন দ্য চিলড্রেন নোন এজ দ্য ক্রিমেস্টারিক রিফ্লেক্স আমরা এনি রিফ্লেক্সের কি কি থাকে একটা অ্যাফারেন্ট লু তাই তো ফিজিওলজিতে পড়েছে একটা অ্যাফারেন্ট নার্ভ স্পাইনাল কর্ডে একটা সেন্টার then the efferent which supply a motor muscle efferent is a sensory so we stroke the upper part of this hair jekhane femoral branch ra supply koreche it carries the sensation to the l1 or l2 spinal segment then so which carries the efferent loop femoral branch of the genito femoral nerve l1 l2 spinal segment then orders trimester to act so these order carried by the again genito femoral nerve by its genital branch which causes stimulation of the trimester muscle which pulls the trimester up so that you can easily especially in children see the testis is pulled up uthe gache so this is known as the trimesteric reflex if it is a present l1 l2 spinal segment is okay if it is absent there is some difficulty either the femoral branch or the l1 root or the genital branch is defective so this is known as the trimesteric reflex afferent loop is the femoral branch of the genital nerve center is the spinal segment of the l1 l2 and efferent is the genital branch sorry bhul bolechi efferent is the femoral branch of the genito femoral nerve center is the l1 l2 and efferent is the genital branch of the genito femoral nerve so it is a very important nerve genito femoral nerve tar jonno details e bollam which carries not only carries the sensation in the upper part but also a reflex is formed by the trimesteric reflex ajke ekta question diyechilam ospite keu onekei likhte paroni jani na je biceps reflex ta ami cheyechilam je biceps ekta tendon first day te diyechilam je what is the jara first day te diyeche what is the structure it is the biceps muscle tar pore tar muscle origin insertion the last te diyechilam what reflex is subserved and what স্পাইনাল সেগমেন্ট ইজ ইনভলভ হবে বাইসেপস রিফ্লেক্স ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট রিফ্লেক্স দেখবে প্রত্যেক আউটডোরে তোমাদের করবে এখানে মারবে এই যে উঠছে দিস ইজ নোন এজ দ্য বাইসেপস রিফ্লেক্স ইজ ক্যারিড বাই দ্য সি ফাইভ সি সিক্স তোমরা জেনে নেবে এইখানে সি ফাইভ সি সিক্স সেগমেন্ট ইজ ওকে ইফ দ্য বাইসেপস রিফ্লেক্স ইজ ওকে তো অ্যানাটমি তো দ্যাট ইজ দ্য অ্যানাটমি ইউ হ্যাভ টু করোবারেট উইথ দ্য ক্লিনিক্স আদারওয়াইজ নো এভরিথিং quadratus femoris ei jacche o nerve quadratus gore jacche what is the use if we not a good doctor anatomy means doesn't mean the boring anatomy you must use the anatomical knowledge in practical field here is the cremasteric reflex ajke jader ache hoyto whole life bhulbe na je bachchader jodi amra bhabi l1 segment e kono gondogol ache if we before a poor patient don't afford for mri you can easily no by this trimesteric reflex that it all is present or not is there any damage of this spinal segment or not so this is the anatomy not that the femoral 
এই অপটিউরেটর নার্ভের এই ব্রাঞ্চ হোয়াট ইজ দা আগে আমাদের দিস টাইপ অফ কোশ্চেন্স আস ওয়েটিং হাউ ডাজ ইট এড হাউ ডাজ ইট এন না ব্রাঞ্চিং দ্য সাপ্লাই দ্য ফিউমোরাল আর্টারি মনেই নেই আমাদের ইট ইজ নট নো ইউজ এইভাবে পড়বে তোমরা সো দিস ইজ দ্য জেনিটো ফিউমোরাল নার্ভ তাহলে কি কি ব্রাঞ্চ বললাম ইলিও হাইপোগ্যাস্ট্রিক ইলিও ইঙ্গোনাল জেনিটো ফিউমোরাল দিস অ্যানাদার ইম্পর্টেন্ট নার্ভ ল্যাটারাল ফিউমোরাল কিউটেনিয়াস নার্ভ অফ থাই যখন ফিউমোরাল ট্রাঙ্গেল করবে প্রত্যেকটা কাজে লাগবে ল্যাটারাল ফিউমোরাল কিউটেনিয়াস নার্ভ অফ থাই এখানে এঁকেছে কি হ্যাঁ এঁকেছে লোক এগেন ভ্যালু ইজ দ্য এল টু এল থ্রি দিস ইজ এল টু অ্যান্ড এল থ্রি পস্টার ডিভিশন জয়েন টু ফর্ম এ ল্যাটারাল ফিউমোরাল কিউটেনিয়াস নার্ভ which passes over the comes out from the lateral border of the swas major muscle lateral border in upper part swas major muscle comes laterally and passing below the inguinal ligament just kalke jeta bolechilam antero just below the antero superior iliac spine in the notch there is a notch between the antero superior iliac spine and posterior antero inferior iliac spine bolechilam to there is a notch a notch the pass korche to comes out in the thigh to supply the cutaneous sensation of the lateral aspect of the thigh ei jaga ta so lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and there is an clinical anatomy there as it passes below the inguinal ligament there is a chance of compression of this nerve ei je ekta chotto jaga di ekta notch ekhan diye nerve jacche opore inguinal ligament so in some persons there is an pressure effect oi jaga ta jodi kono karone nerve swelling hoy othoba jodi fracture hoy iliac bone er kache this nerve may be compressed or damaged leading to as it is a cutaneous supply severe pain sensory disturbances severe pain or altered sensation over the lateral part of the thigh as it supply the upper part of the lateral part of the thigh and this condition known as meralgia paresthetica meralgia paresthetica sob boitei ache dekhbe meralgia paresthetica anesthesia means absence of sensation if there is a no sensation we call anesthesia and paresthesia means altered sensation amra normal jeta amar ekhon hocche this finger e ei je dicchi ekta sensation ache jodi altered hoy onno rokom hoy we call paresthetica paresthesia so there is an altered sensation as due to compression of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve of thigh and we call it meralgia paresthetica gelo er pore dutu important nerves bolchi ekta hocche comes out from the medial border of the comes out piercing the medial border of the swas major muscle and passing under the inguinal ligament but not through the femoral sheath and it is the femoral nerve femoral nerve is not a content of the femoral sheath femoral artery femoral vein ami ager din bolechilam details e is a content of the femoral sheath and femoral nerve is not a content of the femoral sheath it is outside the femoral sheath but it passing under the inguinal ligament so it comes out at the medial border of the swas major muscle and it is formed by the agei bolechilam l2 l3 l4 divides into anterior and posterior division bolechilam to the posterior division of the l2 l3 l4 join together to form the femoral nerve here the root value is important so root value is important for genito femoral nerve root value is important for femoral nerve root value is important for obturator nerve so dorsal division of the anterior primary rami of l2 l3 l4 forms the femoral nerve 
which comes out from the medial border of the swas mesar muscle passing under the below the inguinal ligament then it divides into anterior and posterior division pore asche then the anterior division of the l2 l3 l4 nerve l2 l3 l4 abi bar bar bolchi anterior division and posterior division posterior division of the l2 l3 l4 join together to form the femoral nerve so root value of the femoral nerve is l2 l3 l4 and anterior division of the l2 l3 l4 join together to form a obturator nerve so root value of the obturator nerve is same l2 l3 l4 only difference femoral nerve forms by the dorsal division and <coughs> obturator nerve is formed by the ventral division so root value of the femoral nerve and a obturator nerve are same l2 l3 l4 important so it comes out from the lateral border of the swas mesar muscle enter the thigh and supply the medial aspect muscles and medial aspect of the thigh তাহলে এটা হয়ে গেল অপটুরেটার নাম সো দিস আর দ্য ইম্পর্টেন্ট ব্রাঞ্চেস অফ দ্য লাম্বার প্লেক্সাস এছাড়া অনেক সময় ফ্রম দ্য থার্ড অ্যান্ড লাম্বার নাম নট ইন অল পারসনস হয়তো তোমাদের মধ্যে একজনের third and fourth lumbar nerve joined to form a another nerve known as the accessory obturator nerve ex present but not always the bole diyechi meralgia paresthetica is a pain or burning sensation felt over the anterolateral aspect of the thigh usually caused by compression of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve often asked in the oral examination or ospi genito femoral nerve root value l1 l2 acha er pore next time we describe korbo femoral nerve ager din boleche am khub short e bolbo femoral nerve bolar age tumra ekhono dissection koroni tar jonno bole nichhi chobi ta dekhacchi there are muscles in the anterior aspect of the thigh what are the muscles number 1 anterior muscle of is the most important muscle obliquely crossed from anterior superior iliac spine to be inserted in the medial border of the tibia that is the sartorius muscle dekhte pachho obliquely crossing all other muscles from origin anterior superior iliac spine bolechilam kalke anterior superior spine to one one muscle one ligament this is the sartorius muscle a ligament is inguinal ligament then it goes obliquely crossing from lateral to medial side then it inserted into the medial upper part upper part of the medial surface of the tibia sartorius then there is an another muscle the four muscles are there rectus femoris rectus femoris has got a two heads of origin straight head and reflected head straight head arises from the key very good very good anterior inferior iliac spine come on and reflected head arising bolte bhule gechi kalke just above the acetabulum reflected head দিকে থাকে vastus intermedius this rectus femoris vastus medialis vastus lateralis 
and vastus intermedius these four muscles are called together quadriceps femoris quadriceps femoris ei je quadriceps exercise quadriceps injury to a football or rugby player a quadriceps muscle they ultimately for join together to form a single tendon known as ligamentum patelli which is inserted into the patella and so this is that vastus also has got a insertion in the patella for a purbe acha so these are the quadriceps muscle and there are other muscles here extreme medial muscle it is known as the gracilis kal ke bolechilam anterior aspect of the body of the pubis theke ebong iscobar among theke niche tar tole royeche adductor longus adductor brevis and adductor magnus ekhane dekha jacche na bhalo pore figure ache bhalo dekhabo so these are the muscle so these muscles and here like the iliac pectineus iliacus and psoas muscle pore abar dekhabo so these are the muscles of which anterior group of muscles are these quadriceps muscles are known as the anterior group of muscles and also iliacus pectineus are also regarded as the anterior group of muscles but pectineus is the position is such it both acts as anterior and a medial group and medial group of muscles ki ki gracilis adductor longus adductor brevis adductor magnus obturator internus a and obturator externus are known as the medial group of muscles eta jante hobe ei tukuni bole ami ebar femoral nerve e jacchi so femoral nerve after its origin comes out under the inguinal ligament enter the thigh and immediately divide into two division anterior division and a posterior division before dividing from this trunk it gives two branches before it divides into anterior division and posterior division it gives small branches which supply the iliacus muscle and the pectineus muscle amra pore ashbo pectineus is a hybrid muscle hybrid muscle ki if a muscle is supplied by two nerves we call hybrid muscle jemon brachialis ekhane hybrid muscle bujhte parle flexor arekta muscle hybrid ache bolo bol thik bolecho ha flexor digitorum profunda is a hybrid muscle eguli chotto kore boi er pashe note kore rakhbe ba ekta alada khata korbe tricky jinish guli hybrid muscle eguli note kore rakhbe jate porikha oral er shomoy dekhe jete paro acha so this is the femoral sheath ei femoral sheath e baire diye beriye gelo ebong before dividing it gives nerve to iliacus nerve to pectineus to supply the iliacus and pectineus muscle er pore then it divides into anterior division and a posterior division and between the two division one artery is present eta abar note kore rakhbe lateral femoral circumflex artery so what lies between the two divisions of the femoral nerve answer lateral femoral circumflex artery for mcq for oral what lies in between the two division of the uh ki bollam uh, of the femoral nerve answer lateral femoral circumflex artery what is lateral femoral circumflex artery tumra jene jabe ektu pori jagge ei dekhcho femoral sheath this is the femoral sheath ei femoral sheath er kintu baire this is the lateral border of the femoral sheath tar baire फ्रम दिवशन देर आर सो मेनी ब्रांचेस 
and from the posterior division so many branches arises ki kore mone rakhbo ager din bole diyechi keu bolo shortcut and quadriceps shortcut and quadriceps jibone bhul hobe na whole life e from the anterior division hocche shortcut এই দুটো মনে রাখবে শর্টকাট অ্যাকচুয়ালি এই স্টার বললাম না শর্টকাট মিন কি এস নাপ টু সার্টোরিয়াস এস ফর সার্টোরিয়াস কাট মিনস কিউটুনিয়াস এবার কিউটুনিয়াস কি বাকি থাকছে ল্যাটারাল তো দিয়েই দিয়েছে ফ্রম দ্য লাম্বার প্লেক্সাস ল্যাটারাল পার্ট ইস সাপ্লাইড বাই দ্য ল্যাটারাল ফিমোরাল কিউটুনিয়াস নাট আর দুটো কিউটুনিয়াস নাট বাকি থাকছে ইন্টারমিডিয়েট অ্যান্ড মিডিয়াল so cut means medial cutaneous nerve of thigh pachina medial cutaneous nerve of thigh ane tum likhe na ar ekta hocche intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh medial cutaneous nerve of thigh and intermediate cutaneous intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh এরপর হচ্ছে কোয়াড্রিসেফ কোয়াড্রিসেফ মানে বুঝতে পারছ কোয়াড্রি মিন্স কোয়াড্রিসেফ মাসেল কোয়াড্রিসেফ কোয়াড্রি মিন্স কোয়াড্রিসেফ মাসেল সো নাপ টু রেকটাস ফিমোরিস ভাস্টাস মিডিয়ালিস ভাস্টাস ইন্টারমিডিয়াস ভাস্টাস ল্যাটারাল স্যাফ মিন্স এ সেন্সার ইন অফ স্যাফেনাস নার্ভ তাহলে খুব কঠিন মনে হচ্ছে কি ফিমোরাল নার্ভের ব্রাঞ্চ মনে রাখা একদম নয় শুধু মনে রাখবে ভুলে যাবে না নাপ টু এই যে ইলিয়াকাস অ্যান্ড পেকটিনিয়াস ফ্রম দ্য ট্রাম সো অ্যান্টিরিয়ার ডিভিশন শর্টকাট অস্ট্রিয়ার ডিভিশন কেন কোয়াড্রিসেফ তার মধ্যে স্যাফেনাস নার্ভ ইজ দ্য কিউটুনিয়াস নার্ভ অ্যান্ড ইট ইজ দ্য লংগেস্ট কিউটুনিয়াস নার্ভ অফ দ্য বডি আবার ছোট্ট করে লিখে রাখবে longest cutaneous nerve in the body ekdom toe of the supply kore medial side e acha <coughs> if you want shit bole diyechi এগুলি পরে পরে নেবে তোমাদের এখন দরকার নেই তাহলে ইঞ্জুরি টু দ্য ফিবোনাল নার্ভ যদি কোনো কারণে হয় দো রেয়ার রেয়ার বাট স্টিল মে হ্যাপেন তাহলে কি কি হবে ইলিয়াকাস সার্টোরিয়াস পেকটিনিয়াস এফেক্টেড হবে তার জন্য ফ্লেকশন অব দ্য হিপ এফেক্টেড হবে ফ্লেকশন অ্যান্ড অ্যাডাকশন অব দ্য হিপ এফেক্টেড হবে এবং এটা পার্শিয়ালি এফেক্টেড হবে সবচেয়ে এফেক্টেড হবে এক্সটেনশন অব দ্য নি এই এক্সটেন্ড করতে পারবে না ভালো করে এক্সটেন্ড করতে পারবে না খুব রেয়ার পরীক্ষায় দেওয়া হয় না তাও জেনে রাখো আচ্ছা কিউটুনিয়াস নার্ভ অব দ্য থাই যদি বলে এই ল্যাটারাল পার্ট এটা ল্যাটারাল কিউটুনিয়াস নার্ভ ইন্টারমিডিয়েট পার্ট বা দ্য ইন্টারমিডিয়েট কিউটুনিয়াস নার্ভ অ্যান্ড মিডিয়ালি মিডিয়াল কিউটুনিয়াস নার্ভ অব দ্য থাই করে এবং আপার পার্টে দুটো নার্ভ আসে একটা আগেই বলেছি ফিমোরাল ব্রাঞ্চ অব দ্য জেনিটো ফিমোরাল নার্ভ আর একটা হচ্ছে ইলিও ইঙ্গোনাল নার্ভ আচ্ছা স্যাফেনাস নার্ভ স্যাফেনাস নার্ভ ইজ এ লংগেস্ট কিউটুনিয়াস নার্ভ এখন ডিটেলস বলছি না ইট সাপ্লাই ফ্রম দ্য পস্টুরিয়ার ডিভিশন অফ দ্য ফিমোরাল নার্ভ দেন ইট পাসেস মিডিয়ালি পাসেস হিয়ার অ্যান্ড এইনস passing along the medial border of the tail and ends at the ball of the great toe dekho koto ta boro and supply the cutaneous sensation over this region so medial margin of the sole 
median margin of the soul is supplied by the femoral nerve. The bone is Here for the next nerve jet is the obturator nerve. Obturator nerve. Obturator nerve is formed by the ventral division of the L2, L3, L4 nerve. It comes out and under the media lateral border of the swas mesial muscle, under the inguinal ligament, and enters the medial compartment of the thigh. And again, it divides like a femoral nerve into anterior and posterior division. Kub details bolat door karni. Ami eta sagittal section. Look, this muscle agi ki bolechi. A medial compartment a gracilis chara ki ki muscle roche. Adductor group of muscle. Adductor lo longus. Adductor brevis, adductor magnus. Adductor magnus is a peculiar muscle. Key muscle, adductor magnus has got a dual supply, dual action. It both belongs to adduction medial compartment or adductor of the hip joint. Adduction coche. Come on, for a poor this is the adduction, this is the abduction. And also it belongs to the hamstring group. So, adductor magnus has got a adductor component and a hamstring component. Hamstring are the muscles present in the posterior part of the thigh as one. So, anterior division, this is the adductor pectineus, this is the adductor longus, this is the adductor magnus. And this is the adductor brevis. Tale K hoche superficial adductor longus. Tarpore K roche adductor brevis. Tarpore K roche adductor magnus. Erom babe. Actor por actor. It is the adductor magnus hoy. Adductor brevis. Adductor longus. Taro pore roche pectineus. Erom babe. Adductor magnus, pectineus, adductor longus, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus. And obturator nerve comes here and divides into anterior division and a posterior division. Anterior division comes below the pectineus but superficial to the adductor longus, and posterior division passing between the adductor. Sorry, sorry, bhulwal lab. A passing, an adductor brevis is the main key boundary between the anterior and posterior division. Anterior division passing superficial to the adductor brevis and posterior division passing posterior to the adductor brevis. So, anterior division passing superficial to the adductor brevis and posterior division passing posterior to the adductor brevis. So, anterior division it supplies the pectineus and adductor longus and also the gracilis. And posterior division supply the adductor brevis and most important adductor magnus. So, pectineus has got a dual supply both by the femoral nerve and the obturator nerve. So, pectineus is a hybrid muscle both supplied by the femoral nerve and the pectineal nerve obturator nerve and most important jeta important last bolchi femoral nerve agi bolechi shudhu cutaneous important supply noy shudhu muscle supply noy another important supply of all muscles is the joint supply both femoral and bhalo kore eta shuno clinics e lagbe both femoral and knee joint both hip joint and knee joint are supplied by both femoral and obturator nerve. So, when subsarterial plexus porbe, tohon buse barbe. So, both hip joint and knee joint are supplied by both obturator nerve and a femoral nerve. So, 
a very interesting point. Any pathology of the hip joint, joint, a joint arthritis, patient will say, knee joint, knee joint is okay, totally normal. Patient will say, knee joint is better. Referred pain. Referred pain is legal. But knee joint is better, hip joint is better. Over e, female air is, is present on the iliac fossa and obstruction are closely related to it. So, any ovarian pathology may compress the obturator nerve. Ovary the pathology is patient will say, I want to be a little bit. Eguli is anatomy and clinical anatomy. Mathai rakte hobe. Kuak desha tekhani difference. At a knee joint pain ni eshe che. You examine kole all okay. X-ray kole all okay. Patient is still patient complain of pain hoche. By hip joint pain hoche. Then you must have a strike that might be ovarian pathology. Tohun patient shop symptom kin the patient will not tell before a doctor. Then we ask, give leading question. Then patient admit yeah, there are some problems in my menstruation and other. Some pain is here. So this is the clinical anatomy. Referred pain is a very important pain. A cardiac pain referred here. A cardiac pain referred first patient complaint made to take. Just to take, ekhan a pain bolchi na. This is the beauty of the referred pain. So, this is the obturator nerve. Are you going to jabe na? Monoche. Tale, muscles, anterior division kiki supply koche, pectineus gracilis, adductor longus, and adductor brevis occasionally. And posterior obturator, oh, I tell you, obturator externus is supplied by the posterior division. Adductor brevis and adductor magnus. Adductor magnus is cone part supply kore? Adductor part. Tale adductor magnus is an hybrid muscle. Agi bolichi adductor magnus has got an adductor component and a hamstring component. So adductor part only, which takes origin from the femur, which only is supplied by this obturator now. And hamstring part is supplied by the tibial component of the sciatic nerve. Tale adductor magnus is also hybrid muscle. Tale already tomra oniguli hybrid muscle pay gale. This is the adductor brevis, this is the pectineus superficial, adductor brevis, adductor longus, adductor magnus. Eibhabe, thaite jokon dissection kodbe, dekbe. This is the supply, anterior division is in front of the adductor brevis, posterior division behind the adductor brevis. Anterior division supplies pectineus, adductor longus, occasionally, usually adductor, uh, occasionally adductor brevis. Posterior division supply adductor magnus, adductor brevis and obturator externus. Brigred. That means when the urine sugar is present in less amount, urine sugar means by and large it's urine glucose until proved otherwise. Until proved otherwise means there is no other cause. Right? You know by this time that lactose can give false positive result. Any reducing sugar including drugs, vitamin C, you have, you have, I have demonstrated it. So that gives an idea of some amount of quantity that is semi-quantitative. That's not the real quantitation. Today you will measure plasma glucose, what is actually done in laboratory. So for that, why you will be required to know all these things in detail? Because I, as a clinician, none of you will practice this laboratory estimation or this urine glucose, uh, this urine strip testing. Your role 
will be to monitor and to find out the faults. For that, you must have a thorough knowledge. Because these will all will be done by the technicians who are not only less qualified, less well aware of the facts, having less knowledge also. So at times they will commit mistake. And if you are not aware of the real procedure, you have to accept their finding. Finally, you will be the treating the patient. So whatever the responsibility, that is called a vicarious responsibility, once you take care of the patient, patient is directly under you. And fortunately, if you are the only, only person, you have to own the entire responsibility for anything. In a hospital setup where somebody is bigger, I mean, holding a higher post under which you are working, like HOD, A to G by, by his position is responsible for the misconduct done by you. Similarly, anything which is done by the technician, which is done by the nursing staff, finally is your responsibility. Because you have asked for blood sugar estimation, blood glucose estimation, and the, suppose the sample has been drawn wrongly or the sample has been reported wrongly by the laboratory. At the end of the day or after this laboratory report is sent, you will see the report and if you are not satisfied, then you must ask for a repeat examination and you have to analyze the cause. And the cause is usually with, the, with either with the nursing staff or with the uh, paramedical staff who has drawn the blood or there may be a problem in the laboratory itself. So that thorough knowledge of everything is required. See, there are many things which need to be told, but because of the shortage of the time, I am unable to tell. At this stage, you must know the principle of estimation of goods. That is the, the first two slide which I will be showing will be important for your own class. Suppose if you do not know the procedure, you cannot go and pinpoint where is the fault. So with that brief introduction, because I will start this glucose estimation, that is very, let me show. Please do not write all these things right now. I will ask you to write down, first you understand. And if you do not understand, you let me know what is your problem. I will give you enough time to write down. Today, basically, I will be demonstrating you, and the next day, we will be giving a hands on training. You will do it with your own hands. So, first, what is the principle of estimation? These two slides you have to write down. First, you understand right now. Give a little space and then write first this one. Then you will write on top of which this one. Okay. Give a little space. Write down quantity by estimation of plasma glucose. The same procedure can be used for blood glucose estimation in serum and also body fluids. That is, there are several body fluids, some, something like CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, ascites, pleural, and pericardial. Right on the top, this quantitative estimation of plasma glucose. Glucose is estimated from plasma as I told in the diabetes class. It can be done by the serum, but that is not a recommended procedure. Why I am telling you? I will tell you. And this is basically a colorimetric estimation by glucose oxidation peroxidase method. You write down this, this much. And then you understand, then you write down. Okay. <coughs> now give a little gap and write down this part. Glucose plus oxygen, glucose oxidase to gluconic acid plus hydrogen peroxide. Write down a little rapidly so that uh, we can discuss something more which will be clinically relevant. But these two slides will be for you only, exclusively for the examination purposes and at your level. And second stage is H2O2, AAP, phenol, quinoamine, dye, peroxidase, and water. This much you write down. All of you must note down, never use any mobile, do not take any picture, you just write down. I want, you should 
write down this thing. So this will be asked during examination, and I think in all probability blood glucose estimation will be given, and this principle will be asked. Have you completed? Please start a little faster because otherwise you will not be able to leave before one o'clock. Yesterday it crossed at at about one fifteen. So during enzyme class. I have told one aspect of uses of enzymes. Apart from many uses, that is ELISA and this uses of the after heart attack, that urokinase and actinate blaze. I told also it can be used for diagnostic purposes. Now this is the real use of enzyme. We are using enzyme for glucose estimation, glucose oxidation, peroxidation. Both are enzymes. Now we are in, uh, I mean, estimating glucose. Why? Why this method is required? See, glucose. If I dissolve in water, I'll not be knowing what is the concentration. Suppose yeah, I have dissolved 100 milligram of glucose in 100 ml solution in one test tube or one glass, 200 in one, 300 in one, 400, 500, and 1000. If I mix it thoroughly, and if I give show you the glass. To you, it will look like a distilled, just like water. You will not be able to know what amount of forget about glucose, whether glucose is present or not. You will not be able to tell. And in the blood, apart from glucose, there are many substances like urea, cholesterol, creatinine, uric acid, sodium, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, all enzymes, what not. So. these are present in the plasma so we have to select a method which will specifically detect glucose if we want to measure glucose similarly if we measure to want to measure cholesterol we have to again select a method which will categorically or very specifically measure cholesterol or urea here the estimate our interest is basically glucose so in the first reaction because since it is not visible i repeat one thing i one day i told you that as a clinician what you will see you will see with your naked eyes and maybe with some stethoscopes or some instruments so which is visible by the naked eye is usually done by the clinician that which cannot be seen by the naked eye but you require a microscope that comes under the purview of pathologist but which can neither be seen nor by nor by using a microscope but requires a biochemical reaction comes under the purview of biochemistry so glucose cholesterol triglyceride uric acid you cannot see in the under the microscope so for that we have to adopt this biochemical method so this glucose which is really not visible is allowed in the first reaction so now with the glucose oxidase to form gluconic acid at this stage you do not write i'll give you time just understand so basically glucose is i been converted to gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide now we are taking hydrogen peroxide from the first reaction and we are allowing it to react with amino antiphenazone and phenol to form a pink colored compound quinamine dye with the help of enzyme peroxidase that dye will form a color so the amount of glucose which is present which will be proportional to the amount of quinamine dye because suppose if 100 mg of blood glucose gives 100 mg suppose 100 mg of quinamine uh, h2o2 then 100 mg of h2o2 will give 100 mg of quinamine dye similarly if it is 200 it will be double if it is 400 it will be double and you will see this color in your practical class some of you of your batch who attended last week has seen a standard level with 100 and 400 what is the difference between this intensity of the color the more in the uh, intense the color higher the concentration so now you write down in the first step what we are doing in the first step Glucose present in the sample. The sample in this case is plasma. 
not serum, but it can be measured by serum, will be converted to glucuric acid and hydrogen peroxide by glucose oxidase enzyme. Write down this thing. This is required. Only this part you must remember. What is the principle of estimation of glucose? In the second step, hydrogen peroxide will react with 4 avionic antiparin and phenol to form a pink colored quinoamine dye, which you will see today. So, the intensity of the color of quinoamine dye in that particular solution is proportional to the amount of glucose in the sample. Is this part clear? Is this part clear to everybody? If this is not, then I am going to repeat again. Has everybody understood clearly? So you must be able to tell this thing. I mean, without having a break, your way of talking will give a, you are having, you are really confident and you understand the matter. And basically, since it is colored compound, so we need to measure that color. So the instrument which me measures the color is a colorimeter. So the color of the solution is measured colorimetrically at 500 nanometer. So we require a specific wavelength for a specific color. You can write the color of the solution is measured at 500 nanometer using a colorimeter or by a colorimeter. That will be sufficient. So colorimetrically means that we are using it colorimeter, using a colorimeter. If it is a spectrophotometrically, then we are using a spectrophotometer. Okay. Now to do this test, what you do this, this is, second part is also important. Now you have to take three tubes. One is write down this thing. This you will do it. I will first I will demonstrate today. And all these things which I will discuss today, I will demonstrate today and next class you will be doing this test. You write down. You label three test tubes. First you write down B, that is blank. Second one is S and third one is T. B means blank. Blank means it does not contain anything. It will be having a distilled water. Yes, means standard, means we are having a known standard of glucose based on which we will ca calculate. In the glucose standard sample, suppose you write down you, in, the, in the blank tube, you take, take 20 microliter. See, 1 ml means 1000 microliter, write down. 1 milliliter is equal to 1000 microliter. So, we are taking 20 microliter and that 20 microliter will be taken by a fixed pipette. Pipette at a distance, pipette at a distance. Bala, 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 bala. Hemolysis is there? Yes. So, okay, let's see. Let's see. Do you have a test tube? Do you have a test tube? Test tube, not a pipette. Do you have a test tube or a plastic test tube? Okay, plastic test tube. Do you have a plastic test tube? Do you have a 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 test tube? Uh, micro pipette to the year. 20, 20 microliter, 1000 microliter. So, you have seen the micro pipette, it was given in the spotter. So, there is a 20 microliter fixed pipette, I will show it to you, and there will be 1000 microliter pipette. Using that 20 microliter micro pipette, we will dispense 20 microliter of blank and do not try to mix that pipette, that vendor micro pipette with the another one. The dedicated one, this is. And similarly, for st standard, you will dedicated micro pipette. Do not suck and then do not use this one, then it will be contamination. And there will be another micro pipette which will be for sample. And in the blank tube, you can you just see that you are taking only 20 microliter. But rest, you are not taking anything. So this is 20 microliter. Can you see? Can you see the 20 microliter? And this is 1000 microliter. So there will be dedicated tubes I have given deliberately so that you don't confuse because if you suck extra amount, they will be touching. And your friends next to your experiment, 
if you want to use that one, that will be contaminated and it will show a color. So by doing, uh, by uh, you have done this experiment and have left it, but don't think that your uh, train must get a lower marks or a false result because of your mistake. So in the standard tube, only 20 microliter, nothing. In the sample means it will be given provided an artificial sample. Real sample we are not giving because that will be infection material. I tried to use yesterday's sample, but since this was kept in the fridge, there is a hemolysis and show you in the practical class itself, you will see what happens if somebody wants keeps in the fridge. So glucose reagent will be having that thing, that glucose oxidase, peroxidase and a buffer. That is a ready-made solution. And with the 1000 microliter pipette, that is 1 ml pipette, this is 1 ml pipette directly, you dispense 1 ml and then mix, mix well, so that that 10 micro, 20 microliter gets mixed well with the 1 ml of reagent and keep it standing in the test tube for 30 minutes at room temperature and then take the reading at 500 nanometer and you will see during that 30 minutes by the color changes, colors change, I mean since the reaction will take place over time, so maximum color will be developed by uh, at 30 minutes, that is the reason why we take the reading at 30 minutes because the enzyme substrates will be converted fully to product into product. That's the basic application now. You are coming to the real application of enzymes. And today, what we will be doing basically an enzyme substrate reaction. Okay. So then you have to do the calculation. Oh, just I am putting it up off for the time being. Um, just one minute. Uh, I'll show you how to calculate. Now, if for that for the test for the test you will get a reading for the blank you will get a reading. See that what you have seen. I have shown it to you yesterday. That exactly. This twenty microliter, twenty microliter, twenty microliter, two ml. What is written? One ml. I think I wrote it wrong. So please please rectify. Please rectify. It is a, a two. Uh, because I have to increase that, that is a 2 ml, not 1 ml. Sorry, sorry, I, I have committed a mistake. When hardly I have written, I apologize. That will be 2 ml. That is 2 ml, you just write down. 20 ml, 20 ml, 2 ml. Yeah. Projector? It is the Okay, okay. Last at the end, okay? That will be better because I am in continuity. I will explain it in a little bit. I will explain the calculation, leave some space. Now, rest of the things we will we'll discuss. Just to save time, I am doing this thing because this part I have written. Hurriedly, I have written. Actually, this is 1 ml, but since that will be 10 microliter, but you will commit error, that's why I have made it 20 microliter, nothing more than that. Now, this will be collected from the blood. So, we have to collect the blood. Blood needs to be collected by you. And you have to practice it. Why? Because See, you will be the overall in charge, technician will fail, nurses will fail at times. At that time, we will be called. Dr. O, Amito, Dr. O, I, by the all of you are Bengali. Uh, are, is there anybody who is non Bengali? Anybody non Bengali, please raise your hand so that I will not speak in because See, it's, a, it's an area where most of the people are Bengali. Uh, don't don't feel don't feel if any one of you is a non Bengali or cannot understand, there is no need. See, this is a group discussion, small group discussion. We want everybody to understand. 
the problem which will face that in a setup, normally this is done, you advise for blood glucose estimation or any investigation in the ward, nursing staff will draw the blood or probably in a big setup, laboratory person will come and draw the blood. And in the laboratory setup, you are the laboratory in charge, they will do doing the, uh, and collecting the blood and then at times they will fail. So until all, unless you practice, you will also miserably fail. And as a doctor, you must learn IM, IV techniques because some of your near and dear ones in your family might fall sick. You know the treatment, but since if you cannot give an IV injection, you will really feel very bad. And your position in that family or in that society and the place will be very bad. That is the reason why I started practicing, learning all these techniques from third year itself. I used to go to the laboratory. I mean, I used to beg that I want to uh, learn this technique. In the ward, I approached the sister and then started the IV lines also. So in the third year itself, believe me, all the minor surgical procedures which are done at the peripheral health center level were learned by me. I started assisting from th uh, operations also from third years. So there is a learning curve. So in the department which I headed for 30 long, one long years, there were problems. Technicians who are drawing blood, difficult sir, I am Ami Pachina, sir, blood da pawaja chana. Then I had to come and draw the blood. Since you are having an adequate knowledge of medical information about the surface veins also, you will be able to draw the blood. The real problematic situation will be infants, aged persons, those who have undergone chemotherapy. Because the veins will be visible, but if you pick the needle, needle will remain inside, but you will nothing, no blood will come out. Similarly, if an IV fluid is given in the channel in the ward itself, the veins have been, I mean used, the medications have passed through the veins, and even if you prick, blood will not come. So at that time, you will be called. Now you have to use your own brain, and you have to select in a, in a given case. Suppose in a cancer patient, I have faced two situations in my laboratory. Apart from daily small veins, which they could not puncture, I punctured using some of the techniques which I will tell you. The cancer patient underwent chemotherapy in all his oral forearm veins. She was a lady, a little bit fatty lady. Blood could not be collected. I asked her to sit down on, on the table with a height so the legs keep hanging. I sat down at the floor and drew the sample from great saphenous vein present on the surface. I punctured from here. I, I tightened with a tourniquet here and got the, this thing. And similarly, for a, for a child, there is a problem. They could not draw the blood. I told her mother to hold down the head keeping her head at the end of the, in a, in a bench and simply pinched. The baby started crying and I punctured a little on the uh, neck bends. So that is the reason the sister will not do that thing, neither the laboratory staff. So you have to learn at times from where in a given situation you can draw the blood. So normally materials required for the blood is two decades. Two decades is this one. The rubber guard, you can use a band type of thing also. So that is required. So sterile syringe with needle. So that is a sterile syringe with needle, needle inside. Some are available without needle also. Needle can be purchased separately. Two ml blood is just used for drawing blood. It will be usually 23 gauge needle or 22 gauge needle. But for giving injection, that is just uh, this is a larger caliber uh, needle for giving injection usually 24 gauge is used or less than 24 that will give you less pain but here the purpose is to draw the blood and the blood should come out very smoothly the larger the bore of the side the minimum is the time and the maximum blood can be drawn in a short span of time without causing any hemolysis 
But if you want to measure the blood glucose, this will be two ml of blood glucose. This is, you need not write all these things. You just listen. That part you have to write, memorize what in the first slide. This is for your advanced information. I will not get any chance to teach you. That's why I am teaching. So glucose only. So in a from a one patient, you will be required to do the hematological investigation. You will be required to do microbiological investigation. So single peak, you can draw the blood, some amount of blood, and they distribute. So either depending on the number of investigation, I can, you can either opt for draw four ml blood, six ml blood, or even ten ml blood. So that from a single prick, you can draw the blood sample for a multiple parameters, which is normally done. Seventy percent alcohol is used as an antiseptic solution, not hundred percent. Or isopropyl alcohol, if you cannot get it, cotton will be required. This will be this is alcohol. This is cotton. Nowadays, any cotton soaked with alcohol is also available. One thing that also you can use. Now, blood collection tubes. In our time, we used to do in the in the small tubes with anticoagulant, even a small glass vials, because that was not, at that time the, these these type of commercially available tubes, which are in vogue right now everywhere, were not available. This you will see it with your own hands in the laboratory. So that blood collection tube will be used. These are called vacutainers. So this grey vacutainer is basically for fluoride vial. Remember, this part you must write down that for blood glucose estimation, fluoride vials are used. Fluoride test tubes or fluoride vials are used. Why sodium fluoride vials? Because sodium fluoride inhibits enolage and thereby it prevents glycolysis of the packed cells like RBC mostly. WBC and also platelets, because if enolage enzyme is inhibited, then the whole glycolytic pathway will be inhibited. So glucose present in the sample will remain stable. It remains stable for 24 hours. Because the, why this vial is required? It can be from a clotted blood, it can be from a serum also. But if you allow the blood to remain with the clot or with the formed cells, the cells will draw glucose from that plasma. So there will be a gradual fall of blood glucose and in our laboratory I have seen the degree of fall at room temperature usually ranges from 5 mg, usually on an average 5 mg per hour. So if you draw a sample in the fluoride vial, if you draw the same sample in the EDTA, EDTA will not allow clot clotting also, that is, that is an anticoagulant. And if you estimate blood glucose here, suppose if it is 100 mg per deciliter, and after three to four, hour, four hours, if you measure in the EDTA vial, the level will be around somewhere around 85 to 80. So that degree of fall will be there. So it can be measured with the EDTA, it can be measured with serum also, but the degree of fall will be there. And in situations, you may be required to do that estimation, but at that time you inquire at what time the blood was drawn and when you are separating it from the clot. Once you separate the serum, then there will be no fall. But so long it remains in the contact with the blood cells, <coughs> it will draw blood. It will lower the blood glucose level. That is the reason why sodium fluoride is used. Is it clear? Because in most of the setup, the blood is drawn in, a, in one place. It is transported to the laboratory. Earliest time you will get the I mean, centrifugation, separation, all these things. It will be taking about one hour time or two hours time. At times, in, if it is sent to a higher level centers, suppose Kolkata, from Bolpur, the sample is being sent to Kolkata. So that will take about 6, 7, 8 hours, even 10 hours time. So that time, blood sugar level will fall. But because if you take that right vial, then blood sugar level will not fall. Okay. And band-aid is an optional. Band-aid, you require it. Some people give a band-aid. Now, coming to the actual picture, this you just understand. No need to write down. You will know all these things. I will not give, get an opportunity. That is the reason I am telling you. So, syringes are available in multiple forms. So, this is 2 ml syringe. I am not advertising this for fun. Uh, there is no, no intention. Multiple companies are producing this, uh, this type of syringes. But I got this picture from the internet. 
immediately I downloaded the picture and yesterday it was not shown. Uh, I thought that it would be better if I show this thing. So 2 ml syringe is available. This is only if you want the blood glucose level, they would draw, use 2 ml syringe. If you want more than 2 ml at a time, then use 5 ml tube. Can you see this is 3 ml tubes are also available? Syringe. So 5 ml is also available, 10 ml is also available. And for babies, usually they, there's less blood is required for which you draw this insulin syringe. That is 1 ml syringe. And the needle is very small. At times, this syringe also I used for the adult. Those whose vein could not be seen, particularly fatty ladies. You cannot see. Only surface veins are available. They are just like babies. So I used to use this thing or the, or the needle which used to be uh, when I used in the pediatrics department. I brought that type of needles also, then I used it for those difficult veins. So one thing I want to see, if you see the needle very closely, the needle will not appear just like the needle which you use for the seeing purposes. If you look at the closer end, that will be there, the surface will be like this. One part will not be, the, it will, uh, can you see this, this can, you, can, can, you, can you get the difference? This part I have enlarged it. So this is called the bevel end. That part must be kept upward, upwards while picking. That you must remember. So as I told you, it is available in several forms. Lower the gauge, higher the diameter. Means if, if you see the caliber of 24 gauze outer diameter, it is 1.83 millimeter. And 27, it is 0.42. So lower the gauge, higher the diameter, and vice versa. So normally, for blood collection, we use 23 gauge or 24 gauge. This 21 gauge is also can be drawn 23 gauge. For giving injection, 24, 25 because pain will be less. And needle gauge. This is a, 14 gauge, rapid for blood transfusion, 18 gauge, for blood transfusion again 20 gauge, again mostly fluid IV in transfusion, slower medication, this 22 gauge because in the vein it will be given, so vein must must be blocked, 24 gauge needle is the, more, uh, 23 gauge needle is the commonest needle used in the laboratory, 24 gauge needle is used for the elderly pediatrics and small veins and 26 gauge is basically for the neonates and pediatrics department this is used. This you will know because I have wanted to give some amount of idea practical information. So blood collection procedure. You know, this I will demonstrate yesterday I have given from one patient one person must volunteer. I will show you the difference. So as a doctor you must know just to save time. I am telling you this, write, note down, try to remember all these points. Select a visible vein on the forearm. Why forearm? Because the pain in this area is less. The more you go from this area, middle area, there will be more pain. And in the, the veins are very much visible. Veins are very much visible here. But if you prick it, this area is very sensitive and the people present will simply <laughs> Starts outing. So avoid picking these veins from the hand. Not only this thing, the skin is loose here, so veins will slip. So that part is forearm is the most preferred side. Now apply a tourniquet, which I will be demonstrating. After apply in the middle of the forearm, this upper arm, and then ask the person patient to tighten the fist. Basically, we are allowing a more venous return and we are obstructing the blood flow here. The stella is the area with cotton soaked with 70% alcohol. Do not cross talk. Is there anything important? Hello? What is the problem? What is the problem? Tourniquet, as I apply tourniquet, that's what I am telling you, I will demonstrate it to you. Just to save time, I am just giving you a brief idea. 
so that yesterday I spent a lot of time on this. That's why I'm giving an idea. I'll demonstrate it. Apply two naked means it just tighten it. Or I'll, I'm tightening it. Just come, 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 come here. So apply two naked means. You can left hand will be the preferred hand because this is non-working hand. So you just use this thing, make a like this so that you can remove it. Okay. Ask the patient to tighten, tighten your fist. So tightening will cause, I mean, greater venous return from this part, and also this vein, this vein uh, which is draining from this part periphery to the heart will also be blocked because you have applied and two decay. And on top of which is allowing you to tighten it. So veins will be permanent, that is your purpose. And from that you will get the blood very easily. Okay, we are trying to inflate that vein which is present here. Normally it is not visible, even if it is visible, but it will remain in the collapsed condition. We are allowing the, that collapsing condition to bulge it. And she will feel pain, yes. some amount of pain. Yes, the, you ask the just, you inflict this thing. I will demonstrate it to you. That now after this thing, uh, some of you should uh, you just come here. You are also volunteer. So, you uh, have to do it. You have to do it. দেখিয়ে দিচ্ছি তোমরা কি কি মিস্টেক করে দেখিয়ে দিচ্ছি সেই মিস্টেক গুলো যেন তোমরা না করবে না বসো বসো তুমি বলো সবাই দেখতে পাচ্ছ না এখানে এখানে দাঁড়া তো এই দেখো এখানে দেখো ভেনটা দেখো বোঝা যাচ্ছে না ঠিক আছে দেখতে পাচ্ছ ভেনটা দি ভেন ইজ নট ভিজিবল হিয়ার সো ইউ জাস্ট ট্রাই টু লোকেট হোয়ার ইজ দা গুড ভেন না ভেন ইজ নট ভিজিবল হিয়ার ইফ ইট ইজ নট अवेलेबल দ্যাট ইউ সিলেক্ট ফর দা রাইট রাইটার now again their vein is not visible here vein is there vein is there but vein is not visible in contrast come to me sir to me sir dekhi dichi practical problem ta ki ache eshe chole se real practical problem eglo hoy ghorona tomar dekhi dichi ki ghorona ta ghote ta bolo ker vein na yes she is having vein but she is having a vein deeper to stain it is not visible in contrast if you tighten tighten the fist now you can see some vein here but that area i am not going to prick where well, this is this will inflict pain come here dara tumi kon dara e dekho bhenta dekhte pachho now the see why, what i am doing e dekho dekhami dekhachi e dekho ei obostha jodi bhenta kori if i allow if i want to prick it the vein is relatively in a collapsed condition what i am doing here i am putting this tourniquet right here in the upper arm in the middle just see the how i am doing this thing now i am asking to tighten his fist tighten 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 can you see the prominence when there is no need can you can you can you see okay you can see now once you do this thing then this cotton will be i am not pricking you right now don't worry don't worry i am not pricking you see i am just applying so that area will be soaked with the cotton or here you just apply this cotton in this area but you ask him to tighten his fist allow the spirit to dry completely this is not done and once you sterilize the area you cannot touch it for most of the times everywhere i have seen after this thing there is a touching again pricking again needle i am drawing all these mistakes i will show it to you the moment you touch with your hands again you are decontaminating i mean contaminating the area so again if you want to sterilize this thing use this again swab again so do not this do this practice do not allow this practice to occur because this is going to cause some amount of infection although not doesn't occur really because the minor area is prick so once this area is prick then you pick it from the side you can prick directly on the vein but then the bleeding will be maximum if you pick it from the side then there will be little pain but that blood area will be blocked so after you insert the needle you do not ask the patient to release the fist the once the blood is drawn then you ask the patient to release the fist so now the vein is going back and while keeping this thing 
you just remove it with your right hand. Because this hand is now closed because you have punctured it. If you don't do it, blood will come out. And then you just ask the patient to keep the hand flexed and with the fist released. There is a tendency, the patient by reflex will tighten. Tighten, tighten the fist. Even if, if he does this thing, or if the patient does this thing, there will be again backflow. Again, it will be blood. And it will open it. वो जातो बार तुम्हें खुलते बोलो तो तब तो वो बंद कर दे। खुले दिन हद तक उनका भाग भाग गया कौन? हाँ आठ घंटा। ऐ दिसील भी दे ही और तब ऐ चुप कर बस्ता कौन? चुप कर बस्ता करेगा ना? पांच तक दस मिनट दस मिनट बस्ता तक बोल दे। और कुत्ता नॉर्मल ना हो। कारण तो बोल दीजिए। एर पौरे अबार वक्त बोला चाहिए अबार घोष में ऐसे ही कोहरा जावे ना कारण बोल चाहिए हमने तो इंजेक्शन वन वी गिव इंजेक्शन वी आर गिविंग इंट्रोड्यूसिंग एन इंजेक्शन टू द साइट एंड देयर इज टेम्पररी स्वेलिंग एंड इन दैट इंजेक्शन एरिया व्हाट वी डू बेसिकली वी अलाउ वी स्क्वीज दिस एरिया टू so there will be less pain. That is not true here. Here we have punctured the area and we have to give time to allow the normal system to clot that, clog that area. There will be platelet aggregation, clotting factors will be activated and that punctured area will be sealed. Now this punctured area has been sealed naturally in five minutes time. Again you are dislodging. Again, I was checking. Again, the system is trying. Again, you are doing this thing. Now, ultimately, at one point of time, the clot enter, clot will come out, and the blood will extravasate from these blood vessels into the extravascular space, and there will be swelling. And people are really restless. They don't want to keep the hand flexed for five minutes, and after some time, they will come with the swelling. After he has, that he has done that several times, he will not admit. And you have to be careful. Immediately ask the person, how many times you have rubbed it? No, 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 no. He is not at fault. He or she is not at fault. That's why what I have written on the right hand side, after giving blood, release your fist, release it. For, uh, keep it for five minutes. If you do not try to ever rub your area, otherwise there will be bleeding. All these things were written. And I have used this in multiple areas. So while they are entering into the laboratory, that is seen. While they are giving blood, that is also seen. The, after some time, if the patient comes, I used to tell, were you sleeping at that time? In multiple places, and I have instructed you. The technicians have been instructed. But this is a problem. So that area, these technicians make an area by touching the needle also. And there will be, I mean, after sterilizing the area, again there will be touching. That is not allowed. Okay. Now, this some of the tips I am telling you. The inflation. Some of the things I am going to tell because now recording is not going on. See, to learn medicine is a science. There is no doubt about it. This part, selection of vein, puncturing vein, all these things are real science. But to practice medicine is an art. So most of the doctors, successful doctors, are not only confident about the, having a confident knowledge on the science, but they are also having mastery on arts. So while you are picking the patient, obviously that cannot be a pleasurable one. That is painful. And you have to, what's your, uh, ask it a slide, uh, recording what's your, uh, so your purpose is to give less pain. If you give the less pain, the patient will say that doctor is collects the blood very good and, or even the technician collects the blood very good, I want to give the blood to be, uh, to, to be drawn by that particular technician or by the doctor. There are two tips I am telling you. Purchase a costly syringe needle. That costly syringe needle is just like bladder blade. 
the needle will be very sharp and sharp needles usually give less pain that is the number one point number two point while you are drawing the blood you try to inflict as much pain as possible within the entire forehand so that there will be minimum sensation of pricking so you ask the patient you know that blood uh, this vein is visible even if the patient doesn't tighten also i can draw the blood in this condition itself even he is standing without using this to indicate from this vein i will be able to draw the blood now just for to avoid the pricking what measure he will do he will take he will ask the patient to tighten and then ask the patient to release the fist tighten your fist tighten your fist tighten your fist tighten go on tightening so tightening will give more pain and at the height of that pain you have to prick it and during this pricking you divert the patient what is your name what is your house what is distance all irrelevant questions irrelevant to you relevant to him but beneficial to you because that person will ha ta to amar bari okhane murshid khuda bari murshid bari murshid bari acha acha ye ye na bhorapur bus stand re kodu jeta kon kon bhasha jay kodu kon shomoy laga ei hiji bhi question koro question ko divert kore dao divert by the time wo oi sob answer dite tomar blood tana hoye gache blood tana hela ha thik ache thik ache ekdin jabo khub bhalo ache bujhen amar iccha baroner iccha ache bole street er jene niye te bhagat acha oi khan theke jabo koto ta dur ache bolchi kintu tomar sob tana hoye gache blood by this time bhule gelo ठीक है दिस इज द आर्ट शी ऑफ द अप्लाई ऑन अ गिवन सिचुएशन चलो जाए आर क्या थे बोल रहा अस ओ एट तो टैग कोई नहीं सो एट आर मतलब व्हाई आई एम टेलिंग यू बिकॉज यू जस्ट वांट प्रैक्टिसिंग बिकॉज विदाउट प्रैक्टिस यू विल नेवर बी एबल टू सक्सेस पर्टिकुलरली डिफिकल्ट फ्रेंड्स व्हाट आई कैन सजेस्ट व्हाट आई कैन सजेस्ट यू कैन परचेज अ बॉक्स ऑफ सिरिंजस एंड नीडल and this is a low cost instrument you can prick each other hardly matters what is the problem because you can prick two to three person at a time you just play see patient will not give this is a private institution i am telling you government institution set up are different but you have to learn so only learning way to help from each other from you i studied in a government college uh, the, i mean there is no problem but in a private setup it is not allowed not a, you will not be given a chance so you have to find your own uh, out you just uh, at your own or time even after you pass i suggest you go for voluntarily to some government hospital work for some hours to learn these techniques they will uh, they will allow you that i want to draw this blood i want to do learn this uh, iv technique they will allow it so so i told you so apply tourniquet ask the patient to tighten the fist this part i have covered sterilize the area with the cotton soap with 70% alcohol okay so rectify the allow the alcohol to dry i repeat open the syringe from the plastic holder tighten the needle that you must ensure also that it is tightened otherwise there will be leaking from that side this you will show i demonstrate pick the side with the bevel side of the needle upwards that bevel side i show you that side should be upwards not below gradually draw the blood because if you draw the blood rapidly there will be high amount of turbulence to the needle and it will cause a rupture of the rbc membrane and the serum you will see it will be hemolyzed ask the patient to release the fist after keeping the alcohol soaked cotton remove the needle gradually ask the patient flex continuously for 5 minutes hand flex for continuously no rubbing on the area less movement of the punctured hand for 30 minutes because that area has been punctured that area has been sealed so some more time will be given so that it is completely sealed up somehow this bandage is applied as a cosmetic value but this you may not require it now after you have collected the blood you have to centrifuge the blood to get that sample that i will demonstrate to you and then from that plasma you will get the estimate of the blood now problems this will be the problem in the situation first apprehension peaking number of lights so there will be some apprehension and the apprehension degree of apprehension varies second pain so i have given you some idea how to reduce pain and you have to do it masterly 
and in your own way. Now bleeding from the site. If you rub it, there will be bleeding. And particularly for aged person, those veins are atherosclerosis, means hard, they will, or their bleeding will not stop even after 10 minutes, number one. Number two, many patients are on anticoagulant therapy because they are taking anticoagulant drugs to keep the blood liquid, particularly cardiac patients. For them, you ask them to keep the hand flex for 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Because that, from that side, bleeding will not stop. Because their platelets are all loosely attached. They have been kept loosely attached by the drug. So you have to give enough time. And in that patient, I ask, do not remove, uh, use the hand for another two to three hours. Swelling around the pricking site, I told you, if you, by mistake, if you cause any extra vaccination of blood, that is your fault. If the patient does it, that is patient's fault. Vesovagal attack, common problem. Sometimes people are seeing somebody is being pricked, blood is being drawn, just by seeing while in the queue, patient will faint. And it happened yesterday. I am not blaming, it, has, it can happen with anybody. Why this happens? Because he is having an empathy. We all know, we all know sympathy. Sympathy means, all of you know what, is, what does sympathy mean, the opposite what is cruel. But in these patients who have vesophagal attack, those who, have, those who have been pricked, they can suffer because they are having the pain. They are seeing the blood. Patient can have the vesopagalic attack itself while blood is being drawn or soon after the blood has been drawn. Or just by looking at the site, somebody else can suffer from vesopagalic attack because they are having empathy. Means they are having the same feeling of pain within themselves. That he is being pricked at least as if I have been pricked, as if I am feeling the pain. And I do not know, I have heard that Thakur Anukul Chandra became famous because a horse was whipped and the whipping mark was found on his, the back of, his, of Thakur Anukul Chandra, but I, I am not sure about the, that story. That is an extreme form of auto-stigmatization or empathy or hyper-empathy. So degree, if it is very too much, he might fall right, right on the side or maybe afterwards. So vesopagal attack can occur. So vesopagal attack will occur because there will be extensive peripheral vesodilatation. Blood will be drawn on the lower part of the body and brain will suffer from ischemia. And because of that thing, the patient will fall down. And this is very much important particularly for pregnant ladies, those who have come for advanced pregnancy. If by chance while it falls, a high chance of bleeding and loss of baby also. So that part you have to ensure. So better you draw the blood in a situation on this type of aged person where lie, lying down position is available so that immediately you can allow the patient to lie down. The management of vesophagal attack has to be done by you. Do not try to give water on the face. All these things, all are nonsense. Simply raise both the legs together so that by gravity, blood will come down from the leg and it will be horizontally passing through this body and it will come to the head. Then heart will start pumping. And immediately look, some, ask the somebody to raise the hand, both the legs uh, in a second's time and uh, put your hand on the pulse. Usually pulse is not palpable. That means heart has been stopped, heart has stopped. And if you allow it to continue for some time, you can see the consequences, you know the consequences. So then if the pulse comes, keep the hand, uh, hand uh, this uh, legs raised. Or if the pulse doesn't come in another, another 10, 20 seconds, 15 seconds, time, give a cardiac massage some amount of cardiac message that I had to apply yesterday. The pulse will come. Then once the pulse is stable, allow, keep the legs removed from the upright position to the horizontal position. Allow the patient to lie down at least for one minute. 
let the system regularize. Then ask the patient to sit down on, on the floor itself and on a support, preferably on a support. After that, you, through that support, you ask her to stand up simply like this. And you remain on the front side because during this thing, again, you might get an attack. Because the, all the vessel vascular system may not be correct. Some amount of peripheral fluid will be there. And once he is stable, you just ask, accompany him. So for walking for some distance. Then you allow him to, or heart to move on. So that management you have to do. So yesterday what happened? I, while I, she was on the floor itself, I wanted to bring one chair from HOD's room. By that time, she was too smart to walk. And immediately I, I mean, she allowed her to lie down. Because even before entering the lab, she would have collapsed. Because she has not recovered completely. So this can happen anywhere. You have to manage this thing. So empathy, hyper empathy, that is another issue. Sympathy, auto stigmatization. Uh, seeing somebody's pain, somebody will feel it, internalize that pain, and he may suffer also from vasovagal attack. So with this thing, I am I am concluding. I am I will show it to you. Write down. You just go. You come come to the laboratory. Give the set completely. Set what is written there. I will explain it to you. रेजिस्ट <laughs> This grey coloured tube is for blood glucose. This is for EDTA and this is for clot that is plain vial. It can be used in the plain vial. Clot activator is given to hasten the clotting time so that instead of two hours, it can be centrifuged in half an hour time. And this I will show it to you. Uh, just to save time, I am drawing this thing. So I will draw basically 6 ml of blood. I will uh, give 2 ml in each um, test tube. And allow it to stand and meanwhile I'll um, demonstrate this thing. After that I'll centrifuge and show the sample how the plasma looks like. For lying down on a bed, uh, lying down on a floor it doesn't look nice. In that case, worst case, you just keep a sadran, just some the policy sit like that. So that patient will fall down. The best thing is to manage this thing at the ground level. But at your level you'll be wearing a pant. I mean, you, for you to sit down, it will be difficult. That is a problem. Nothing more than that. And all are not accustomed to sit on that position and to treat on that position. That is the reason why it will be kept on the bed. And if it is a reclining position, then the patient can be reclined back. So there will be no problem. You can raise the legs up. I will demonstrate it. The vesopical attack soon after drawing the blood. Now again, just sit down. Just I am not wasting time. I am just picking. Because yesterday while picking, there is accidental mistake by me. And um, accidentally there will be extravasation. Now observe what I am doing and you have to do this thing, you will practice it. I am tight, 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 फेले मैं
এই হাতটা ধরতে বলবো আপনি এই হাতটা এইভাবে ধরুন এটাকে এইভাবে ধরুন এটা ধরুন হ্যাঁ এইভাবে ধরুন চলো এই নিডিল টা শরীর জন্য দেখো ব্লাড টা এখানে এলো না কম তাড়াতাড়ি দেখো ওকে পেন টা কম দেওয়ার জন্য নিডিল টা আমি ইউজ করেছি কিন্তু ওই বেন টা একটুখানি ফ্রিক করেছে এক্সট্রা হয়েছে এক্সট্রা হয়েছে এটা ঘটনা না কারণ এতক্ষণ ধরে টেনেছি না টাইমটা লেগেছে এই নিডিলটা যদি ইউজ করতাম বেশি তাহলে কিন্তু ওর ব্লাড টা চলে আসতো খুব তাড়াতাড়ি সে দিস ইজ দ্য রিজন দিস ইজ 24 কেজি নিডিল দিস ইজ দ্য প্রবলেম উইথ 24 কেজি নিডিল ইট শুড নট বি ইউজড Uh, we want some amount of blood and that should not be any function in that area is slightly i have shown it. some extraction has taken place 23 gauge will be good uh, this will be for 22 gauge will be better for this one because he is having a very good blood vein the caliber of the vein is higher so that rapid they been 22 gauge needle you can use it 23 gauge needle will give a faster 22 23 somewhere in middle so there will be less pain also you have to compromise so 23 gauge needle will be mostly used preferred use but this i mean let me let me do this thing there see when a smaller caliber needle use a larger caliber needle to dispense because there is a vacuum in it that is the reason why it is called vacuum the blood if if i prick it that normally due to vacuum blood will be sucked now in this case the blood is not sucking because either there is a problem in the vacuum itself or uh, the because the needle has been uh, blunted that opening small area so we have to give the blood a slightly drop wise So because of the less volume of the blood, I am giving only the two samples, one in this one and one is clotted, I am giving it. See, this is the problem of, I mean, pressing. If there, there would have been, there, again, there, you know, this is not, I mean, sucked. Because again, the caliber of the needle. Because if you draw the blood in the low caliber of the needle, use one high caliber needle so that the blood is sucked pro properly. This is not the way the, the blood has to be given. still i am i am giving it and this will be given very slowly so this is the problem i have real life problem i have shown it to you this ought not to be done because normally this is sucked normally by this thing and 23 gauge needle we don't have any problem now once this is anticoagulant is there we mix it properly because this is a clear thing mix it and this is an anticoagulant this is also there but you just throw only one once or twice now the clot activator is there it will hasten the clot after some time we will see this after some time we will draw this blood see less amount of blood has been given i am not using this one next day i will show it to you okay clot activator clot activator has been given because it will hasten the process other it will take two or two hours time in half an hour you will get the clot i'll show it to you this i am keeping it reserved for you i'll do this test let us do the korbo na kor protocol ta bar koro tumi khata de lekho ne then then s then t okay eta korar pore ek kaj koro middle e ekhane middle rote niye nebo thik ache karon ta bolchi pore now ei dekho tight ache tobu ekbar ichcha kore khule ekbar tight kore nije just you just tighten it also now this is 20 microliter you fix it that check it Now in the test tube, you just first you keep this thing in your with your hand, okay? Now you type. See, gradually draw. There should. Hey, either either you should stop shouting or come here. See, this you draw it very carefully, very carefully, slowly, so that there is no bubble inside, and then you just dispense it once, okay? Now again, you just draw this sample 
you just insert this thing, yeah, look at this, how I am doing this thing. I am putting this tip a little inside and then drawing this thing gradually. And at the end, there is no, there is no bubble, there is no bubble inside. So that needs a practice. Now I am taking this thing exactly going to a dial into the test tube and dispensing. The last drop, you just touch a little bit on the side. Okay, if it doesn't fall. This is 100 milligram, you just see it with your own eyes. If this is 100 milligram per deciliter, standard solution. So mix it a little bit. There is no problem if you even if you do not mix, but it is in the, it is in the solution. Now again, here you just do the same practice. You just always keep the uh, cap upwards. Again, you tighten. You check this thing and tighten it once again. And then you draw this sample from here. You just, again, you can you have to look it down. Now you have to check whether you have there is no bubble or not. So again, you dispense it. Or if there is no bubble, there is no problem. Also, do you give. Now, if you make any error here, then that will be problematic. And you will see that all of you are not sucking properly because reading will not be the same. If the reading is are same, then uh, there is perfect matching. So now you are dispensing it again, just similarly, exactly in the same way, completely putting it here. And this keeping this thing as such, capping it, now going to, now this is third one, new one, this is this one, new blank, this is blood test sample. Again, I am doing, see, hold it little like this. During examination, what happens? Your hands are trembling. In that case, you just lie down here, sit down here. This will be the position. Because out of fear psychosis, your hands will tremble and you can feel the entire thing. That, that will be disastrous consequences, so practice it. So when you are in a hurry, your hands are trembling, you just sit down here closely and then you just, it will be like this. You keep your eyes level down below, they say that there is a bubble. So if there is a bubble, what you can do? You can simply just drag it like this. So it will come down. So then you plunge it, press it directly. So that if there is any material, it will come down. Now suppose you are in an education setup, you just do this thing. See, there is no bubbles. So once you are confident, then at that time you can do this thing. But they, usually there are some of the patients, some of you might be really sicky and might some have suffer problems, trembling also. So we are dispensing like this. We have dispensed. We have all done this thing. Now we are bringing all these things together in the front row. Twice, this test. So again, the same procedure, you just check it, recheck it, this 1000 microliter, you just check it, there is no problem. And again, you tighten it, tighten it properly. Now, you, this, you just check it up and down. But again, in this case, you have to draw. There is no bubble and you have to practice it, okay? Now, if I dispense, I am showing it to you. Now, if I dispense, that just see, this is the way I am dispensing. So, there is no problem. Now, again, I am sucking, dipping it down. You just, you can go down, touch the lower end and then pull your pipette a little up. Gradually, you do this thing. Is there any bubble? No, no, there is no bubble. Now I am giving it to you, this thing. This one I am giving on the little on the above because the sample, in, it must not touch the sample. So, gradually do this thing because if you, if you do not do it slowly, then that solution that it is containing glucose, it will be simply mixed with this thing and it will contaminate the reagents. Now, if there is a bubble, you just press it down. 
So this part is also clear. Now you put it here. There is one thing the deliberately I wanted to see. Again, you see the moment you check, you just this can see. This you have to do a little faster because time has to be almost same. And the pink color chules already. Pink color, the Kibacho, Astasta, the Kibacho, it was Sumada, Takota, the Chulas Vasta. Totokonam, the Yetakodi, calculated the Bujidi, the Kata de Lekota, concentration of the test Lekota, Yeta Boja Chita, Poriami, Eta Boja, the kind of intensity of the color together. Suman, is going to Leko? First Leko set the machine to zero with distilled water. Set the machine to zero with distilled water. Of test, OD means absorbance. OD of test minus OD of blank. Pure psychosis. Basically, the pain of that particular person from her, the, whom the blood is being drawn, or somebody he is seeing or looking at that site. He is empathizing for that pain being inflicted on others due to needle puncture. Because of the hypersensitive reaction, the patient will empathize her feelings into or his feelings into her, his or her own and will reflect in his own body. Because of the fear thing, fear psychosis, there was severe vasodilatation. And because of the severe vasodilatation, because sympathetic tone will be decreased and that will cause peripheral pooling of blood. So the amount of blood which is normally circulating in the blood normally, even if you walk or run, because of the vasoconstriction, the blood does not uh, I mean, allow to be completely away from the cerebral circulation in the upper part of the body. Then it remains functioning even if you play football. The, in that particular situation, the peripheral vessels will be dilated. So the tone of the peripheral vessels will be lost. So blood will be basically pulled down on the due to gravity downstairs. So there will be no blood to the brain. So brain will suffer from ischemia, less supply of blood, even actually full ischemia. And because of the full ischemia, patient will faint, suffer from unconsciousness, and he will be sealed, or he or she will be simply fall on the ground. And during this process, he might sustain a head injury depending on the height from yeah. where he is falling, that patient is falling. Or if it is a pregnant lady, you know that disastrous consequences will be there, might be there also. So once it is the patient has, I mean, fallen on the ground, never, never try to pull up from that patient from, from that position itself, ground. In that ground position, when the patient, whatever in position the patient falls, you will allow the head side to be on the down and the both legs to be up. Why both legs? Because if you raise one leg, only 50% of the blood will you get. If you raise both the legs, then the entirely, entire blood, this 5 liters blood literally has come down from this part to up to this part. So you are simply lifting it this upward. So the, the blood present in the legs will be completely down because now there is no vessel tone. So vessel tone is totally lost. So blood will come down and it will go, you can move through this thing and then in the same blood vascular will supply will start getting, brain will start getting the blood and meanwhile heart will also start pumping and immediately put a, your hand on the radial pulse. That radial pulse you must examine very thoroughly because in many uh, of your individual, particularly those who are fatty, you will not get pulse uh, uh, properly. And if you do not get in the right hand, check on the left hand immediately because there might be aberrant radial artery also. This artery may be not present rightly here in that particular individual, unfortunately. Might be. It, ha it has passed through this thing. So immediately pull this thing. If you do not get a pulse, immediately give a cardiac massage. Because if you give a cardiac massage, the, you are mechanically stimulating the heart. And because the legs, somebody is raising the legs up, so there is no dust of blood supply right now. Only thing is that you just pump, allow the heart to pump because brain is still active. He is not totally, he has not died. 
So in a short while, the, by this pulse will come, but the volume of the pulse will not be the same as of a normal person. It will come slowly. The moment it comes slowly, you keep the legs raised in that position. Now, once you get a normal volume of pulse, then you allow the leg to be decreased, uh, I mean, brought down gradually, not abruptly. Gradually down from that height. It is almost vertical. Put the legs vertically up so that 100% blood is drawn from the legs. Now, uh, recline it a little bit, make it obtuse, then make it gradually lower down this thing. Now, put it on the horizontal position. Now, once in the horizontal position, again, you go on checking the pulse. There might be normal reception of the pulse. There might be irregularity also. Now, if irregularity means everybody's nervous system is not same, particularly this particular patient, because of that uh, situation, only out of 100 or 200, 300 person, he has fallen, or that um, person who is watching has fallen. So, his, his or her system is not that strong as the other people. So, that pulse will not be regular. And the more you can see the case, the more you will realize that problem. Now, once the pulse is stable fully, same volume, same rhythm, then you allow the patient to draw and somebody must, I mean, support, give a support, or even if there is no support, I will show it in a peripheral situation or in a, in, a, in a home situation. You just allow the person to sit down with his hands, with the, both the hands on the supporting this back. Not, not, nothing like that. You put your hands and you give a, you give a support also. So once he is a little bit stable, then you ask to gradually stand up. But again, the system is not stable. Again, if I have seen, even after doing this thing, again, there is a vesicular attack. So then you just lie down and allow it to stand for at least 30 seconds against a, I mean, support. And you stand on the front. By, by chance, if it falls there, you, you can simply hold him or her from falling down. And then you accompany a little bit, little distance, say five meters, walking gradually. And then you release him. And you ask the patient, once he's walking normally, ask him to rest, take a rest of 10 minutes. Because of the fear psychosis, the situation which made him psychologically weak, I'm telling you, just to get that strength, you allow the patient to sit down quietly for 10 minutes. Yes, you are okay, everything in the system is okay, but take 10 minutes rest before you uh, I mean, go. Particularly if he's driving a vehicle, motorcycle, scooter, this is a normal common. I am okay now. But you advise you, you take some food, move here and there. After half an hour, you drive the vehicle. So don't take that risk. So you don't know, you, you will be again having that, that idea that I have fallen down in the floor. There were several persons who have seen, she might feel shy, she might feel, or he might feel shy. I mean, his mental reactions will not be known. He'll be thinking while driving that I fall, fell down during this thing. And in the course of this thing, he will sustain, might sustain an accident. So that is the basic purpose of training you. And remember one thing, these type of things are common, particularly in the pregnant individual, particularly aged, and those who are seeing the blood drawing for the first time, particularly, they have not seen. Once you see, or somebody sees it, his brain will be seized into it. To those who have this type of problem, the best advice is to allow him, or to allow her, to handle some amount of blood mixed with his hand like uh, fish uh, blood or even chicken blood so that that feeling is there, you ask him to prick something. So that part will be there because you are all medical persons, you have to handle in some way or other, you have to do the operations and there will be much more cuts, there will be much more bleeding, you have to acclimatize your brain to that extent so that you yourself do not suffer from any kind of such setback. Patient will come, patient will bleed, you will see patient is bleeding, you will see, you will not be able to control all that time. The torrential bleeding, you might cut an artery accidentally. Uh, there will be simply a jerk of blood, I mean, it will be coming like a syringe. If you uh, just like a holy syringe, uh, during Dole, holy, uh, we just give, use this color, it will come out in jets. So that type of situation will happen. So be prepared for that. These are not your area right at this first year student, but I want to train you clinically oriented for right at this level so that uh, you get uh, really prepared for the clinical year. But do handle 
or such type of cases, wherever you get a chance, otherwise everywhere, every situation you will not get a chance. Wherever you get a chance, try to get involved, try to observe what the others are doing. Okay, try to learn something. And do not overreact, do not try to counsel too much to that particular person. Only thing is that she should not suffer or he should not suffer in future course of time. Because it's already one o'clock, all the shortage of time, I'm just demonstrating you. Okay, so let us go to the, take the reading. The intensity of color increased. Now I am showing, so let, us, let us go there. I am showing it to you. Showing? Okay. Okay. Just before that, I will do this exercise of centrifugation. Chalo, where did you go? Did you see? Liquid, okay? Here you have clotted nature. You have to put a part of the serum to very well. We have to give it a time, but we have to give it a little bit. Okay? Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Nara, Gora, Daka, Gora, Ulta, Tilta, Tilta, the blood clot. They basically form cells from the plasma in a suspension. This is in a suspension because RBC, WBC are all suspended in the plasma. Now, what we will do is I will putting here and I am putting in the corresponding on the opposite side. There is a cotton match, this is the front of the cotton match. A cotton match, the other? The front of the cotton match. कॉटन वाले सोई दीजो ऐड कॉटन नहीं है सो कॉटन नहीं है सो दूध तेरे के कॉटन वाले सोई दिलाना है खाने के अच्छा ठीक है जी तो कॉटन चाहिए तुम्हें कुत्तूल तो बार बता अच्छा ये देखो ये ये दी के दिलाम ये दी के दिलाम ठीक है जी आप दोनों अपोजिट साइड है बिकॉज़ दिस विल काउंटर बैलेंस this is for 48 means 480. This is 500. 520. This ideally should be taken at 505. Since 505 is not available, that I am nearest to 500. That's why I am taking it this one. Is it clear? And now, what you have to do? You have to set it to zero. This will be the. There is a mark, a white mark. Can you see this mark? And there is also a white mark. And this has to be matched. Here, if you see, there will be resistance. Uh, put it. Okay. Now, here, what we are doing right now, it will, reading will not be the same. There is a problem in this machine. So you just whatever you way you do, you thoroughly clean it outside and look at it. It is transparent and it is clean. There not, should not be any dirty. Now you put this thing horizontally and tighten it. It could be tight. Sustain pressure the core, but it is set core zero. जीरो तो सेट होगा जी, ओके? तो जीरो तो सेट कर लाम, एक बार हमें ए टेक जोल्ड टेक ऐसा ना फेर दिला। जोल्ड टेक फैला हुआ स्थान किंतु ए वो स्थान डिकेन करे, ए वो स्थान तूल दे। आर नीचे वो उल्टा दे जाओ ना, उल्टा दे के लिए आबार जोल्ड चले जाओ दिखे, एक बार ऐसा नियर ले, तो � उटा दियो जीरो कर दिले कोन कोन माइनस टाइम पढ़ाई दो करने की थी। तुम्हारे जेह तो स्टैंडर्ड टीचिंग आमितो सब दिन पढ़ा मैं ये तो कहो जेटा कॉल्ड है सर इधर के सॉरी दिले। ना ना तारा एक तूने पढ़ा ये तो रीडिंग तो नहीं। फिर एक एंड दोगन दिले अब अब ए दिख तो डाक में खाने देख Jiri Yassi. 
भेबना थर्टी 
thing which is representing you to the examiner because you are not there okay as because we are the internals we know that you are a good student but although you are not writing so <laughs> there is no scope to give the marks understood from next uh, exam onwards you write whatever asked to the point whatever asked okay okay yesterday we have discussed about the hip bone okay and today we will talk about the most important bone in our body that is the femur okay so for knowing the femur what is the definition of femur or femora it's a longest and strongest bone of our body what is the length of femur how much 45 cm so which are the other length so if somebody's height is 6 feet what would be the height of femur 1/4 to kitna hoga height 1.25 1.5 1.5 okay one fourth of the height of individual okay then next one is which are the other thing the length is 45 cm who will tell vast difference are transverse colon transverse colon very good are tell me other example of 45 cm in our human body sartorius आर थोड़ा सिक डाक्ट ओके स्पाइनल कॉर्ड ऑल आर 45 सेंटीमीटर ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टेल मी हाउ टू डिटरमाइन द साइड एंड व्हाट इज द एनाटॉमिकल पोजीशन फॉर द फीमर सो साइड डिटरमिनेशन मींस टेल मी फॉर दैट वी हैव टू नो द पार्ट सो व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स इट हैज गॉट हेड ग्लोबुलर हेड देन नेक अपर एंड shaft and the lower end so these are the part okay so uh, for side determination what are the factor you have to know the head head would be directed medially only medially how you have to say upwards forward medially okay u f w upward forward medially and it is articulating where with the acetabulum of the hip joint yesterday only we have known the acetabulum would be always facing lateral side okay so that's why if suppose this is the which side of femur <coughs> so it would be like that sorry because symphysis pubis would be forward okay so which side it is left side okay left side of femur so by that way you could determine the side okay and this is the lower end lower end would be always facing downwards okay arekta ki trick ache there is another trick you have to balance the lower end on the table okay and it would be facing on the same plane because ei dutu ki joint toiri kore these are the condyles okay towards the head this is the medial condyle towards this one this is the lateral condyle so it would be facing on the table okay so if you keep this one you have to balance this one with the index finger kon index finger nibe to the respective hand okay so see it would be like this it would be somewhat tilted okay these two end much touch the table both end okay so this is another side determination okay so anatomical position also and side determination you understood okay now one by one part we will discuss first one is the head okay so head of the femur about the description what you have to say it is more than half of a sphere okay so it is about 2/3 write it down it is about 2/3 of a sphere this head it is making 2/3 of the sphere okay and it has got it would be covered by it would be covered by ki uh, kon cartilage hyaline cartilage so that is nothing but the articular cartilage articular cartilage of the hip joint okay and the head you are having this border it would be covered by capsule capsule of the hip joint okay now most important thing in the head you are getting there is one fovea small 
minute this one pit it is also known as fovea or pit the name of the pit is fovea capitis write it down this is known as fovea capitis okay capitis can you bola hocche caput means head okay caput embryo te ki boli caput caput medusi thik ache caput mane hocche head so here we are having the fovea capitis now the question is tell me the content of fovea capitis which are the content ki ki thake er moddhe at first there is one ligament which ligament it is ligamentum teres femoris write it down ligamentum teres femoris teres mane ki round ligament okay shape would be round whereas you will get in our body round ligament bole silam ami eta tinte round ligament ache in our body comparative anatomy there are three ligament round ligament in our body ekta holo ligamentum teres femoris which are the other two ar dutu ki ki ekta hocche ligamentum teres hepatis round ligament of liver okay ligamentum teres hepatis okay and another one is ligamentum teres uterae uterus e jeta thake uterus e both sides support round ligament of uterus so you are having three round ligament in our body ligamentum teres femoris ligamentum teres hepatis ligamentum teres uterae there are three round ligament okay so what is the main function of this fovea capitis rather than the round ligament of femur which are the other content are ki content thake any other content so this ligament is providing the pathway for the arteries that will supply the head of the femur okay because this is the last structure okay and it will get the least vascular supply so which are the two arteries that are going write it down there are two artery acetabular dutor nami ki acetabular branch okay because where it is articulating where to the acetabulum okay so acetabular branch of acetabular branch of number 1 obturator artery obturator artery and medial circumflex femoral artery medial circumflex femoral artery okay so this is about the head of the femur okay next part is the neck so about the neck what you have to say what is the length of the neck so neck is connecting between the head and the shaft right so what is the length of the neck it is about 5 cm length is very much important okay the uh, length of the neck is 5 cm now it has got how many border how many surfaces very easy two border upper border this one is the lower border this one is the which surface anterior surface this one is the posterior surface now the question is the upper border have articulation of what each and everywhere there is some kind of attachment right so upper border of the neck which structure is attached over here ektu bebe bol bolte parbi capsule of hip joint okay capsule of hip joint is attached to the upper border of the neck okay so what is the peculiarity of the capsule of the hip joint is it complete or deficit complete mane it is uh, forming full ring or not it is incomplete okay ki kore anteriorly it is covers the whole area whole area of the neck posteriorly what is happening in this area okay in this area only medial half medial half mane that this area posterior surface divided into this one medial half and lateral half understood medial half is towards the head and lateral half is towards the this trochanter okay so this medial half is intracapsular medial half is intracapsular but this lateral half is deficit understood there is no capsule okay so write it down about the capsule of the hip joint capsule of hip joint 
although although it covers although it covers the whole anterior surface the whole anterior surface of neck of femur but on the posterior surface but on the posterior surface only medial half only medial half is intracapsular only medial half is intracapsular okay so this is about the neck so head you have understood neck next part is what are this type of epiphysis Femur is the example we are having. How many epiphyses we are getting? Four. 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 example of epiphysis? Three epiphysis. Three epiphysis. How? Pressure epiphysis. Konta? What is the example? This one. Head of the femur. The head of the humerus is the example of pressure epiphysis. Okay. Next one is traction epiphysis. This trochanter. Okay, humerus is a tubercle. Okay, and this condyle, what about the condyle? Again, it is pressure epiphysis. Okay, this is the pressure epiphysis. So, these three are the epiphysis. Epiphysis because this femur is an example of typical long bone. Okay, so here in the neck, these are the attachment. Next one is the greater trochanter. Now, if you see the greater trochanter, it has got how many border and how many surfaces? This is the greater trochanter and this one is the lesser trochanter. So, in the greater trochanter, how many border are there? Only one border. Con border to the is upper border. Upper border. How many surfaces? See, this one is the anterior surface. This one is the lateral surface. This one is the medial surface. Okay, this one is the medial surface. Okay, and this is the posterior surface. Okay, the one kotogulo border pillam acta border chatte surface. One border is the upper border. So, this is the anterior surface, posterior surface, lateral surface, and medial surface. Each and everywhere there is the attachment. Okay, just write it down very much important. First one is the upper border, it is also known as apex of greater trochanter. It is also known as apex of greater trochanter. So, which thing is attached? So, this is the upper border. Okay, upper border or the apex. So, which structure is attached? Cone muscle? Pyriformis. Like, write it down. First one is pyriformis. So, now tell me the origin. Piriformis or pyriformis. Origin ko thai. Origin ko thai. Insertion e khane. Origin ko thai. Hmm? Actually, it has a pelvic cavity, right? Pelvic cavity. So, it is having a surface ta ki sacrament. Which surface it is? Na, jeta posterior and anterior surface. Anterior surface of the lower third of sacrum have the origin for the pyriformis. Okay. And it would be inserted where? To the apex of the greater trochanter. Okay. Or the upper border of greater trochanter. Then next one is anterior surface. Write it down anterior surface. Anterior surface. Conta gluteus. Gluteus minimus. Okay, gluteus minimus. Insertion of gluteus minimus. Origin ko thai? Yesterday only studied. Posterior gluteal line or anterior gluteal line in manche. Thik bolli na bol bolli. Anterior gluteal line or inferior gluteal line in manche. Okay, exactly kon jai ka thai? Ekhane kub shundar bhaave kora hiya chita. Okay, it is a posterior gluteal line. Yeah. Ekhane kya ase? Gluteus maximus. Yeah. A area de kya ase? 
ग्लूटियस मीडियस इटा ते आचे ग्लूटियस मिनिमस इटा ते आचे रिफ्लेक्टेड हेड ऑफ रेक्टस फिमोरिस ओके सो ग्लूटियस मिनिमस वुड बी इंसर्टेड वेयर टू दिस एंटीरियर सरफेस आर किछु बार्ड्स ऑफ ग्लूटियस मिनिमस ओके जस्ट पोस्टीरियर टू द मसल और जस्ट इंफीरियर टू द मसल देयर इज बार्सा ऑफ ग्लूटियस मिनिमस यू ऑल नो व्हाट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ बार्सा इट इज it is kind of fibrophatic cushion that will that will uh, prevent any kind of friction muscle to the bone okay so that is the definition of bursa so you are having the bursa of the gluteus minimus next what surface is the a surface the key surface lateral surface so lateral surface which are the thing you will get this is the lateral surface which muscle would be coming here Lateral tag is there. So see, there is one thing. This is between the greater trochanter to the lesser trochanter. Anteriorly, this line tag is there. What is it? Intertrochanteric line. So above the intertrochanteric line, there is a vastus lateralis, and below it, there is vastus medialis. Okay. So posterior to that, so lateral surface would be also covering this vastus. Okay. now now coming to the medial surface medial surface is too much important okay if you see the medial surface there is one fossa behind the medial surface this is known as trochanteric fossa trochanteric fossa so which structure is attached over there obturator internus na externus obturator externus okay trochanteric fossa write it down trochanteric fossa is for obturator externus okay now here on the upper surface there is obturator internus along with the superior glomeruli and inferior glomeruli now tell me the origin of this muscle which are the origin of muscle par par bole ja obturator externus obturator externus is coming from where I told you uh, previously that which is the content of obturator foramen one muscle. Ki jaaye seta? Piriformis. Okay, piriformis. Oi bhabe cross kore sacrum theke obturator foramen diye cross kore. Ese ekhane insert kochche. Okay. What about the obturator externus? Which muscle is present throughout this three part of hip bone? Obturator internus or externus? internus obturator internus now tell me what is the here you are having the inside you are having the obturator internus okay it is a looking like a drop okay it would be attached to above the ilium ischium pubis hole okay what about the obturator externus then obturator externus ta kotha theke ashe greater sciatic foramen okay the lower third of greater sciatic foramen there is the origin of obturator externus ar ekhane je lesser sciatic foramen there is a origin of above ki thakbe superior glomeruli here thakbe inferior glomeruli okay and here is the attachment this uh, ischial tuberosity above that you are having attachment of quadratus femoris don't confuse two muscle quadriceps femoris kothay ache anterior compartment here this muscle name is quadratus femoris okay so we are having this medial surface so write it down in the medial surface there are four muscle on trochanteric fossa there is obturator externus and on the upper border there is obturator internus along with superior and inferior glomeruli superior and inferior glomeruli on the medial surface glomeruli
so it may vary okay there are two kind of english american english or british english so it vary keo wale serratus anterior keo wale serratus anterior okay so you vary so this is see this is the posterior surface okay so posterior surface if you see between the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter there is one crest this is known as intertrochanteric crest right so in the intertrochanteric crest in between that you can you could find there is one elevation this is known as quadrate tubercle okay so just write it down intertrochanteric crest it is a crest found between the posterior surface posterior surface between the greater trochanter and lesser trochanter greater trochanter and lesser trochanter and in between there is one elevated part there is one elevated part that is known as quadrate tubercle and that is for insertion of ki muscle bolam quadratus femoris that is the attachment ekhane eta puro square shape muscle pabe that is quadratus femoris and it is coming from where from the ischial tuberosity okay pure straight ashe muscle ta okay ese ekhane insert korch okay then next one we will discuss that is about the lesser trochanter so lesser trochanter what are the muscle we will get hmm iliopsoas together it is called iliopsoas okay iliacus and psoas major so tell me the origin of iliacus the iliac fossa of the ilium okay on this area this side interior side or exterior side interior side a side ta okay and another muscle is psoas major so psoas major is coming from where hmm koto theke koto lumbar vertebra कतगुल लम्बरामबोराम transversus abdominis egulo kothay pabi on the vertebra on the posterior abdominal wall okay so swas major one of the muscle of the posterior abdomen okay so this is making the lesser trochanter okay now next write it down the shaft so each and everything is important for your viva okay anteriorly ki attach thake posteriorly ki attach thake everywhere okay so next one is the shaft of the femur so shaft is having just the other long bone it has got three border and three surfaces so which are the border we are getting this is the medial border going to the head okay this is the lateral border this is the posterior border how many surfaces three surfaces ki ki surface anterior surface medial surface lateral surface okay so one by one we will discuss at first we will discuss about the posterior border which is very much important okay so if knowing the posterior border how to determine it is a continuous line okay so how the line is coming that you have to know first one is this is towards the greater trochanter there is one elevation what is this स्पाइरल लाइन टेक उन्हीं की थाके मीडियली थाके लेसर प्रोकेंटर टेक जिन्हें कंटिन्यूअस होच्छे सेटा होच्छे स्पाइरल लाइन ओके देन फ्रॉम स्पाइरल लाइन दिस इज़ द व्हाट इज़ दिस दिस लॉन्गिट्यूडिनल बॉर्डर एल्बा लिनिया एस्पेरा लिनिया एस्पेरा ओके एवं ये खाने आरेक्ट जिन्हें स्पाउडर � what is calcar femorally the weight of individual would be femur to this thick area thick surface of this bone so this is known as calcar femorally okay so in the linea aspera what are the structure you, you are having so first one see this is from the medial side 
প্রথমে কি নাম আছে স্পাইরাল লাইন ওকে দেন দ্য মিডিয়াল লিপ অফ লিনিয়ার স্পেরা ওকে এন্ড ইট উড বি কন্টিনিউয়াস অ্যাজ এটাকে কি বলছে মিডিয়াল সুপ্রা কন্ডাইলার লাইন দিস আর দি কন্ডাইল সো দিস লাইন জাস্ট লাইক হিউমেরাস ইট উড বি ফাউন্ড অন দ্য মিডিয়াল সাইড সো মিডিয়াল সুপ্রা কন্ডাইলার লাইন ওকে সো মিনওয়াইল অন দ্য ল্যাটারাল অ্যাসপেক্ট ইউ আর হ্যাভিং গ্রেটার প্রোকিন্টার জাস্ট বিলো ইউ আর হ্যাভিং ওয়ান টিউবোরোসিটি ইট ইজ অলসো নোন অ্যাজ ক্রিস্টা গ্লুটিআই ওকে ইট ইজ অলসো নোন অ্যাজ ক্রিস্টা গ্লুটিআই অ্যান্ড সামটাইম এক্সামিনার আস্ট ইউ টেল মি অ্যাবাউট দ্য থার্ড প্রোকেন্টার সো দিস গ্লুটিআর টিউবোরোসিটি সামটাইম কনসিডার অ্যাজ থার্ড প্রোকেন্টার অ্যান্ড ইট উড বি মোস্ট প্রমিনেন্ট ইন কেস অফ ফিমেল ওকে অ্যান্ড ইট উড বি ফাউন্ড অ্যাবাউট টোয়েন্টি পার্সেন্ট ফিমোরা ইন ইন্ডিয়া ওকে সো এই যে এলিভেটেড পার্ট এটাকে কি বলছে থার্ড প্রোকেন্টার অর দি গ্লুটিয়ার টিউবোরোসিটি সো হুইজ থিং ইজ অ্যাটাচড টু বা হেয়ার ইনসারশন অফ দেখ দুটো মাসেল অলরেডি আমরা কভার করে ফেলেছি একটা হচ্ছে গ্লুটিয়াস মিডিয়াস অ্যান্ড গ্লুটিয়াস মিনিমাস গ্লুটিয়াস ম্যাক্সিমাস so gluteus maximus would be inserted over here that's why it is known as gluteal tuberosity and also it is known as crista glutei or the third trochanter okay so from here again one line is continuous so that is the lateral leap of linea aspera okay and posteriorly you are having another line that is going towards the lateral condyle so that is known as lateral supracondylar line ओके, लैटरल सुप्रकंडाइलर लाइन। नाउ इन द पोस्टरियर बॉर्डर ऑन द लिनिया एस्पेरा, हाउ मेनी मासेल अटैचमेंट इज़ देयर डू नो? एस मेनी एस थर्टीन, वन थ्री, ओके, सो राइट वन मेमोनिक, जी टू, जस्ट विथ अल्फाबेट्स, ओके, जी टू, पी टू, ए फोर a4 a4 v3 now i would be asking you the muscle whether you could tell or not a4 v3 vq v3 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 <laughs> v3 g2 p2 a4 v3 okay ओके नाउ टेल मी द मसल एट फर्स्ट जी ओके फर्स्ट वन इज ग्लूटियस मैक्सिमस अनदर जी इज गैस्ट्रोक्नेमियस ओके गैस्ट्रोक्नेमियस एंड दिस मसल वुड बी फाउंड वेयर दिस इज वन ऑफ द मसल ऑफ आवर काफ ओके बट व्हिच हेड गैस्ट्रोक्नेमियस हैविंग टू हेड लैटरल एंड मीडियल राइट इट डाउन मीडियल हेड ऑफ गैस्ट्रोक्नेमियस राइट इट डाउन Don't write the mnemonic, please, on the paper. Okay, so first one is gluteus maximus. Then next one is the medial head of gastrocnemius. Then P2. So first P is? First P. P. You have written B? pectineus now you you said pectineus tell me about pectineal line so pectineal line would be found in the hip bone yesterday we have seen right pectineus pectin pubis also it is found in the femur so which is pectin pectineal line this is the this is the spiral line okay and one is the this is the gluteal tuberosity lateral lip right so in between one line is going in between okay so that is known as pectineal line okay so there is insertion of the pectineus so first p is pectineus okay next one is i the p key only only we are concerned about the linea aspera plantaris next muscle is the plantaris keno hobe eta lateral supracondylar line e thake okay lateral supracondylar line e thake so this is the next muscle then a a4 right a4 you know there are three adductors 
adductor longus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus. Okay, laterally, medially, and most medially. Most medially, ke thak be adductor magnus. Okay. Adductor longus kon side thak be? It's one of the boundary of femoral triangle. Thale kon side thak be? Lateral side thak be. Adductor brevis and magnus medial side thak be. Okay, because these are all are the muscle of the medial compartment. Okay. Then next one is. A4, A4 ki kore holo? Hoti to? Articular is genu, small minute muscle. Articular is genu, and this is this is found. This is the small minute muscle, the part of the muscle. This is actually the part of the adductor magnus. Okay? Hmm? Ha, this area. Articular is genu. Okay? Then the V3, you know, there are three vastai, vastus medialis, vastus intermedias, vastus lateralis. So, as many as 13 muscles, okay, on the linear aspera, right? So, now coming to the posterior border is over. What about the medial border? Medial border, which thing is attached? Hmm? Vastus intermedias okay because vastus medialis would be superior to the vastus intermedias and to the lateral border there is vastus lateralis okay this side because it is making what the anterior compartment muscle so all three muscle you are having this area quadriceps femoris okay this side would be vastus medialis vastus intermedias this side vastus lateralis and superiorly cone muscle tarsi that is the rectus femoris, rectus femoris, okay. So, what are the other muscle you will get on this border? There are two border, this is the medial side, so this is medial supracondylar line, this one is the lateral supracondylar line. So, in between that, there is formation of one triangle. So, it is also known as popliteal fossa and what is the content of popliteal fossa? the popliteal muscle because this muscle is looking like a diamond some of the part on the femur but some of the part on the tibia okay next part write it down the lower end okay next one is the lower end okay so on the lower end it is having how many condyles? The medial and the lateral condyle, right? And in between that, there is one crest, okay, or fossa. It is known as intercondylar fossa. And this condyle having two surfaces. Kiki surface ache? Patellar surface mane only this anterior surface. It is also known as anterior surface. And posterior, this surface is known as tibial surface or the inferior surface, okay? Knee joint patellator, just here it would be articulated and this condyle will articulate with the condyle of the tibia, okay. In between that, there is a meniscus, so it is forming the knee joint, okay. Tell me the, what is the mechanism of flexing and uh, extending the knee, do you know? What is the mechanism, what is the position of bone, you know, close to the nadu. Mechanism to key as well, knee jointed mechanism. Suppose now all of you are sitting, right? So, what is now? How is the position of the bone? Hmm? Locking your opposite key, unlocking. I have asked what is the position of bone? Akon kiba be ache bonta. Mane akon karsate articulate koreache. Femur during sitting position. Patellar sate. Patellar surface te eva uteache. Right? Jokon tui stand on the standing position. What is happening? Patellata samne choleace and it is articulating with the tibia. Thikache? There is two muscles, one is locking muscle, another one is 
unlocking muscle unlocking muscle ta ke popliteus popliteus is the unlocking muscle okay now see how to identify the condyles okay there are two thing by that way you could identify first of all see the lateral condyle everyone bhaibate tai jigasha kora hoy lateral condyle how to identify no there is one groove at the corner and this is for the tendon of popliteus tendon of popliteus okay groove for the tendon of popliteus medial condyle how to identify so see on the posterior surface there is one elevation okay that is known as adductor tubercle keta adductor tubercle that is for the attachment of adductor magnus okay so this is about the all the part of the femur okay now tell me about the ossification it has got how many primary center how many second one primary and two four secondary center so primary center appears during seventh week of iu life okay and the secondary center kar kar jonno one for the head one for the one for the lower end one for the shaft and one for the means in between the trochanter another one there are four secondary center okay so when does it unites that is a very important medico legal importance so do you know which ossification center defies this law law of ossification ossification center ta ki bolche the uh, the center appears first unites last tale kon center ta mane nai law ta which is the center that does not uh, maintain the law of ossification or defies the law of ossification फ्रैक्चर नेक फिमर okay most common so i told what would be the uh, thing means prognosis of suppose anybody has got fracture neck femur and it has happened for th 3 years within 10 years ekjon er hoyeche within 25 hoyeche after 60 hoyeche so what would be the fate prothom ta hole ki hobe फैट एम्बलिजम কি করে হয় सपोज এখানে নেক ফ্র্যাকচার হয়েছে সো হোয়াট এভার দা ফাইবার ফ্যাটি টিস্যু ইট মে গো টু দা লাংস ওকে বাই সার্কুলেশন এন্ড ফ্যাট এম্বলিজম ফর দিস ফ্র্যাকচার নেক ফিমার ইন ওল্ড এজ ইজ ভেরি কমন আন্ডারস্টুড মানে এম্বল এম্বলিজম করেছে দেয়ার ইজ আ এম্বোলাস मींस এনি কাইন্ড অফ টিস্যু দ্যাট ইজ অবস্ট্রাক্টিং দা ন্যাচারাল রেসপিরেশন ইন দা লাংস सार्कुलेशन एंड इट मे अबारि सार्कुलेशन ओके সো পালমোনারি আর্টারি বা ভেনে যদি কোনো ভাবে এমবোলাসটা থাকে সো দা নরমাল রেসপিরেশন ওন্ট অকর 
okay and it would be causing what dyspnea shortness of breath it will cause okay so it is known as embolism okay so next one is the avascular necrosis of the head of femur can you hoy this artery is going where towards the head dutu artery tore jani acetabular branch of obturator artery another one is medial circumflex femoral artery so it may obstruct the natural circulation okay so avascular necrosis of the head of the femur okay then next what are the other thing you will get suppose fracture of the septa of femur what will happen and where does it occur dashboard injury while riding the car okay so that is a common thing of the shaft of the femur okay and supracondylar fracture is also very common okay basically who are having any kind of playing they are any thing football like that okay so supracondylar fracture of femur is also very common okay but for the femur you have to know what is avascular necrosis of the head okay and there will be clinical question uh, according to the age of the person okay whether it is above 60 or uh, the 25 it will depends okay so on saturday i will discuss the clinical anatomy of all this lower limb bones okay